actual play, tabletop role-playing game so show on the internet where you, the audience, gets to decide our fates. Woo! We're back yeah. with Campaign yeah. 6, Call of Cthulhu, Horror on the Orient Express, how we feeling? So Excellent. Uh, Amazing. Incredible. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot here. Yeah. It's quite hot here. Um, you may notice something different about uh, everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Look around us. This is a beautiful new little studio space for us. Oh my yes, god. Such a glow up. We, we are we have <laughs> we have mail. We are still in Jack Dodge's home, but we're in not his bedroom anymore. Yay! So thrilling. Oh my god, we're able to like build it out and everyone around this table has done unbelievable work putting together these wood panels, uh, staining all the wood, hanging them, painting all the walls, putting up uh, uh, sound cushions, hanging lights and cameras from the <laughs> ceiling, everything. It's crazy here. Uh, huge, huge thanks to the yeah. people at the table for this. It's, and it's you. ridiculous. And, and to you all. Yes. Oh God, yeah. Literally, the only reason we are able to do this is because the of Patreon. Yeah. And so because everyone watching all. every week. Like, and everyone watching. Just growing, we can't believe we enjoying can life with us. Yeah. We're so thrilled. I'm so thrilled. It feels completely different at the table for us. Yeah. If you know. to see I'm literally now. about to cry. I know. I know. Like really I'm just coming off, down off tech chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the gimlet's hitting. We're I'm sweating. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. One thing I okay. will note, though, is obviously we've come a long way since last week, but we're still figuring out the studio for real. So if anyone sounds too quiet or too loud or if there's echo or something, let me know. I'm still your computer guy. If you look at me looking this way, I'm looking. So don't say anything <laughs> bad. And I don't to say, also, don't say anything bad. Yeah. Don't say a word. And I also wanted to say hello to Storm, Laura, Hannah, Elisa, Baron, Yoel, Dunkstu, Jaden, Sammy, um, Cameron, Alex, um, and anyone else who might be, jo oh, Bruna. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you guys so, Welcome so much. Welcome to 2024, PDK. I know. Here we, here we go. Happy New Year. <laughs> our second act. Second yeah, yes. act two. Yes, yes. our second act. Yeah. Chapter two. Without yeah. a doubt. Mm -hmm. Chapter two. Literally the only thing missing is temp temperature regulation. And then we'll be safe. I'll get that squared away one day. Yeah. 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 One day. That's good. Um, so we are here, if you're new here, Welcome, oh my God, we're so happy to have you. And you may be wondering, how is this interactive? In what way is it interactive? And we're gonna learn very soon. Do we have any announcements before we learn how it's interactive? <gasps> you know, wow. new wow. space. I, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so many. are you going on Patreon? Yeah, I'm gonna distract them for oh, a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Eric, so as you guys know, we're going on the Orient Express to many countries and many places. and wonderful things and so Eric put together a little menu of snacks and drinks for us every week. Yes. 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 Um so this week we have what country uh, I guess I have London. 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 The country is London, England. Yeah. <laughs> we have the country is London. <laughs> we have the digestive London. So our UK people shout out we've got digestive oh, we got the digestive we've got these gimlets and we've, we've got, got tea English breakfast. No one chose that much. option. <laughs> well, I didn't know it existed. Yeah, I got to oh, one sorry. This is a big box of English breakfast tea. We should tea. post all these oh, well, recipes frankly, in the Discord. Tea. I know, hot tea yeah. is like, Definitely. that's true. That's the too hot here. The is delicious. It's kind of like a margarita. Oh my God, so I know, good. I'm just going to love it. Yes. What's in this? Yeah. Just gin and lime juice. And, so lime and lime simple syrup. syrup. Except it's exactly like a margarita except for gin. But gin sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. So, That's fantastic. Way, we will we will be posting in the Discord. Join the Discord. Yeah, join the, the Discord. Description. Um, but I have something to say, which is more thank yous, mm -hmm. more specifically, because these are all the people. You're all awesome, and we love you all. But some people, people who made the studio happen a little more. A little just more. Just a awesome. little. Hannah. Um, that's it. Mackenzie, <laughs> Ellie, Jordan, Caitlin, Georgia, Morgan, Haley, Alisa, Julissa, oh Kennedy, Baron, Henry, Zane, Jordan, Pablo, Mary, Ryan, Melissa, Dunk Du, Laura, Yoel, and Kelsey. Thank you. And um, check out our Patreon. Link in yes. the description. And yeah. actually, I have one more announcement. Is that if any of you joined when Kennedy played our... Uh, Call of Cthulhu one, one shot, shot yeah. a month ago, a couple months? Time, Time is unique. Months ago. Yeah. But um, she wrote you all letters if you joined during that live stream. So I have those letters 
ready to send out. So if you were wow, here and you insane. joined when Kennedy was joining us, um, she has letters oh, for you. Yeah. They're on we'll finally their way. Be getting them. Yes. Yeah. And maybe a sticker from us. Yeah. Maybe. Hell. Hell. Maybe. Um, we should put some cool. stickers in here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Oh, yeah. Work on the boxes, maybe. Work. Well, work. Work. Enough said. Yeah. yeah. Enough said. Um, speaking of Kennedy, we've done a few Call of Cthulhu shots before this. Check those out on the YouTube. Hey, if you're watching us live or in the aftermath, make a gimlet with us as you're listening to us uh, go into this. Um, Call Easy of Cthulhu. To Easy to make. Oh. Call of Cthulhu is a horror mystery game for those uninitiated. Uh, this is going to be less of like a hack and slash fantasy epic and more of an X-Files. More of starting off maybe with a bit of a slow burn immersive sort of feeling into 1920s Europe. Um, and with that, I think we're oh, ready to sorry. learn sorry. how to interact in the chat. So Ooh. we're gonna go to our first cross. Crossroads. Yeah. Our first, first crossroads of season six. Studios first crossroads. Studios first crossroads. <laughs> and <laughs> you're gonna vote by typing into the YouTube chat. And Woo. crossroads uh, to begin is who tells who what they love about them oh. slash who takes a shot. So we have Jack tells Carson what he loves about him. And Macy takes a shot. Uh, vote Jack. <laughs> and we have Isabel tells Jordan what she loves about them. Carson takes a shot. Vote cute. Isabel. Oh. Those are both really cute. Eric wasn't in either Eric. of those options. I know. Can we all go around and yeah. see what we love about Eric? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. An hour. Yeah. Here's the beef eater. How much are you about to get in the game? Is there? Why are you giving it to me? <laughs> Why are you giving it to me? 1920s. It's actually yeah, yeah, it's the band. We need fans. The yeah, we actually. <laughs> Yeah. At some point. Honestly, everybody doing the fans is creating sort of crossbreeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so right now we have nine votes. Jack, four votes, Isabel. Okay. And six votes, Isabel. But that's it. Is gin like good for me. heat exhaustion? Yeah, <laughs> that's what they said. Oh, that do we have shot glasses? That's what they said back no, then. No, I'll stick a little. Oh my god! I think I the cap will do. Say yeah. yeah. So yeah. much With about that, Yes, the 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 people have decided. Uh, you've changed the game. Jack's gonna tell Carson uh, what he loves about him, yeah. and Macy's gonna take a shot of gin. Kick it off, boys. Okay. <laughs> Carson is my best friend. Let's start there. My partner in crime. Truly, the person I think I trust maybe most in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Um. I have more fun, more laughs with you. I'm inspired by your ambition. You really made all this happen. I feel like you're like the creative brain. Um, and you are just, you make me a more positive person. Aww. And I love you. That is the gorgeous. Yeah. That's so gorgeous. Cheers. 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 Do you mind if I pull? Cheers. No, yeah, not at all. Um, <laughs> oh, and cheers, you. everyone. Woo! And with that, I think we're ready to dive into the first episode of Campaign 6. Oh, please don't kill us. Dear Clayton, have you been feeling lost lately? Does it take you too long to remember where you are each morning when you wake up? I feel this every day. Something is growing in our hearts and it doesn't mean us well. Something is alive which shouldn't be, made from parts of what was once living. Brothers in hatred, the skinless revealed. Follow the path in front of you and don't stray as I have. 
you won't find me. All my love, Thomas Kimball. Clayton, your hand shakes uncontrollably as you're holding this letter. You look up from the tracks that you're standing on, underneath a night sky which is missing stars. And as you look up, you can see a train barreling towards you. As the light shines on you, in that moment, you... Train noise. Gasp. Awake. And we're gonna go to a crossroads. Hey, Eric, I'm really... I love us. I'm planted. Eric. I'm planted in the world. I'm planted. No, I'm set. <laughs> My feet are The crossroads for the killers out there is does Clayton remember the dream? Yes or no? Vote yes or vote no. Remember the dream? The, the dream. The dream. Oh. Hmm. Well, then they all in the chat. May I ask, is Thomas Kimball someone from a previous uh, one shot? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't know who that is, though. I don't know who that is. Is it from your first one? But that's right. Go back know. and watch that. I actually think he was also mentioned in ours, but I still would like, who? <laughs> All right, right now we have a nine votes yes, three no. And welcome to everyone else who didn't get a shout out in the beginning. Hello. Um, hey. Che Bella, Midnight Alley, Emily Dub, Sky, um, Julia, Julissa, Squiddles, and anyone else I forgot. Welcome. And that's it. Thirteen to three. For some reason, that was giving me like yoga teacher vibes. Yeah, Fourteen to three. And everyone, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone. I'm in my love era yeah, after Eric's so first class. crossroads. Yeah. <laughs> I love you all. Yeah, exactly. and you're so welcome. Yeah. yeah, make yourself at The killers were asked, does Clayton remember the dream? And they voted yes. Clayton, I'm going to need you to make a sanity roll. Yep. Damn, right it's away. It's already starting. Um, I, like, with all of these roles, Eric, I would love, I know we played last 100%. week, but just to... Feel free to ask questions the whole way through about how it's working. Yeah, I so, naturally picked up a d20, but it's a d100. It's a d100. Oh, I don't even have my dice. Do you need dice? Yes. So and yeah. fly this man in some dice. Okay. You gotta do some So to anyone acting. unfamiliar, we have a sanity score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should also say first. That's anyway. one to 100, and yeah. Carson is trying to roll a number below Below that. 60 is my okay. sanity. your sanity Oh, wow. What's your, your sanity? Uh, that's, 50? what? 50? That's 85. That's gonna be an 11. I'm like, you got it together. That's a success. Roll hit or miss. Mm. As you awaken. Wait, doesn't your sanity change every other <laughs> Gasping. Can. Or your luck. With breath. And your sanity. The memory of what you just saw, of the letter from this man, from someone that you haven't spoken to in quite some time, from across the world, as you looked up at a sky which looked in a way that it shouldn't have, and a train barreling towards you, the words of the letter ring in your head. You stifle a scream but you keep that memory of the dream. And it does not leave you like sand through your fingers. Instead, you commit it to your mind. If you do not have a physical object, I will give you a copy of the letter that you read in First your dream. First um, I think that I would immediately, um, as, I, as I gasp for air, I say, Tommy! <laughs> and then I, I grab at my skin hearing that he said something is inside of us. And I just sort of take a moment and listen. As you listen, you hear the wind blowing out the window. And you look around the room. You can see there's luggage in the corner. It's a marble fireplace, unlit. This dark room, there's a shaded sofa and a desk facing the window where the first light of morning is coming through and snow is falling on London. Carson, if you would describe your character for us. 
Well, uh, Clayton Lane currently is completely nude. Oh, <laughs> in, in the, the nude. <laughs> yeah. Um, Taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think the most distinct uh, thing about him at the moment would be his hair that he puts dyes in uh, to make it almost like gray or white. Um, and he reapplies that every once in a while. Um, yeah, nude man looking scared. <laughs> it, at this, no what question. it's giving so far. Look out yeah. at this dark room, just the kind of soft white light coming from the window. Um, as you sit up in this king sized bed, a plush, luxurious arrangement in this room, a figure stirs in the bed next to you. Jack, if you'd like oh. to describe oh. your character. Um, yeah, I think I'd wake up hearing you sort of jump out of bed a little bit. Clayton, are you okay? Uh, yes, darling. I um, yeah, I had a dream of, of Tommy. Uh, well, go back to bed, sweetie. And I think you see me when I rise. I take up my sleep mask. Uh-huh. Um, I'm in a little like night slip silk um, that I think is a little lace trim. Um, and I think you'd see, like, holding it up, you'd see that, um, I have some scarring along my, uh, arm from our last adventure. I would say that the whole, like, yeah. forearm has scars, and I'm probably missing, like, part of my pinky finger. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm looking, I think probably also scared, um, just having been abruptly woken up, but um, you all know what Faye looks like. Short little Maybe black wearing black. a little some no, pearl necklace anyway to run bed. It, run it back what she looks like. Okay. Okay. Like, <laughs> <"Who's, who's laughs> um, oh, well, she looks like this. I heard this on the Discord. Um, yeah, she's um, a little soul. like Bob, um, like, you know, cute little Bob, not too severe, a little like puffy. Um, she wears makeup, she's cute. I do like Even to, to bed. Bond? I think to bed she probably wears like a little lip tint. Um, uh, yeah. But nothing crazy. Black, makeup, black makeup, Bob, right? Uh, black Bob, okay. yeah. Um, and yeah, and she's, uh, you know, 25 year old, um, young and cute little lady. Mm-hmm. How tall is she? She's tiny. I think she's like, yeah, like probably 5'1. She feels Ooh, petite. But in heels. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which she's always, always ordered. Yeah. In bed. Yeah. 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 A lip tint and six inch yeah. yeah. But nothing else. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if Faye would have told me to go back to bed, I, I would say, um, uh, no, uh, that's all right. I, I, I'm supposed to draw that bellhop today, remember? To pay him for um, uh, bringing our things up. Oh, that's right. Well, would you mind if I laid with him? Maybe a... A dual portrait. A dual, yes. Uh, I think that'd be fantastic, in fact. Oh. L- let me get my paints together. And I, I go over I and... laid as laid. Smooshy. No. No. You Just go strong. Over. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joined him, yeah. I go over and I, I open a, one of the suitcases that is just filled with easels and, and paints and um, dyes and powders that I mix with waters mm-hmm. to make different... Imagine you also you have a canvas where you have a sketching already begun of a certain position of uh, a lounging uh, uh, young man um, preparing to uh, pay a favor to one of the bellhops here at uh, your well-appointed hotel. And as you go over to uh, collect your art supplies, um, you see your window here desk is up against. The windows kind of open up to a small balcony looking out onto the city of London as the dim light is slowly growing brighter over the capital of England. As the white snow falls, you can see that there's a black raven that (laughs) comes and alights on your balcony. I try to see behind its eyes, oh. see 
if it's really it's looking at me in a way that seems not just raven-like. Go ahead and make a psychology check for me. Hmm. What's your psychology? Let's see what my psychology is. Where's my... Oh. Um, my psychology... Uh-oh. Did you find it before me? Okay, 61. Hello, Raven. <laughs> uh, uh, a short kind of as it turns its head and does look at the window the light being what it is you imagine that it would only see a reflection off the glass it wouldn't see the interior of this hotel room and yeah you can't shake the feeling that it does seem to lock eyes with you as it looks in towards you What? <laughs> don't, don't make any sudden movements, but uh, do you see? I, it's um, strange. I, I think this raven might be looking at me. <laughs> I look over to the raven. Um, psychology check? Yeah, Is go it, for that's it. what you said? There's nothing else I could use. For her. <laughs> but mm-hmm. me on Perhaps painting. Perhaps, <laughs> Perhaps. 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 natural what about world survival? as well. Or natural world, maybe. Mm-mm. <laughs> I, I would never use that. that. I'm so sorry. That I would never use that. Charm the bird to see what, it, what? If, he, if he's charming or not. I think you would be trying to charm <laughs> offensive. All bird. right. All right. I'll do psychology. I have better psychology than you. Okay. <gasps> Wait, okay. Did our luck reset? Our our luck from our luck resets Your every luck. session? And speak on that. Because I'm yeah. four away. I'm gonna say start of the new campaign. I'm gonna learn luck rules later. Yeah. We reset Ooh. the luck. Okay, and we roll That's luck exciting. by doing what? Yeah, how does that work? No, you can you just roll, spend them, right? You can spend them, yeah. But don't you start... You're saying redo, we... You roll. redo... Don't you, like, times eight... It's oh, 3d6 times five. Three d right. 3d6 times five? I actually need to do but that. But you're saying... Well. Our, we should redo yeah, that, right? Yeah, you're saying we restart it. Okay. We redo it at the top of a... Okay, should we all roll oh, our sure. luck? Oh, yeah. I well, I want to roll with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what they're doing right now, and Call of Cthulhu, one of your stats is luck, how lucky you are. So they're gonna roll three six-sided dice, and they're gonna multiply that by five. That's gonna be their luck number. So when they Damn. roll a luck check, they're gonna try to hit that number or below, so they want to be high. Or if they roll something else, and they want to improve their score, they can detract from their luck score and add that to their roll. So it's times five, 13 times promise five. it'll make sense. that's what I need to know. I want 13 times five. Damn, now we're all good. I think 65. Yeah, I got 15. I got 45. Yeah. But I last got game 16 I got... 16 luck? Last game I got 15. 15 times 5. Oh. Oh, wow. 75? Yeah. That's great. Okay, yeah. I'm going to so I'm gonna spend like 4 people. luck and succeed. Okay. Um, I will say, just for a warning, luck is going to... Last we're not time. going to <gasps> Redo regain it. to maximum. You may be able to get some back. I'm not entirely sure at this point. But you will certainly want lot. to conserve it over time. To look at his bird? No, I know, but then I can level up at the end of this session and be more likely to hit a psychology, right? True. If you succeed on something, yes, yeah. then you check so it. I, and I think it might be worth it, because I'm that's not going to really often get point. psychology that close. Yeah, yeah. That's already right. power gaming. Yes! yes. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, you're being <laughs> so <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it, um, and... <laughs> What do I know about the bird? <laughs> yeah, tell us um, about the bird. You look at the bird. It was a successful psychology. Looking at it, two things kind of pop up into your mind. One is a memory of traveling with someone who would strangely be followed by um, black feathered birds um, at one point mm-hmm. in the past professor at Miskatonic University uh, named Vitrova. Um, oh my god, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And the second is... Psychology! As you think back on 
your time in Massachusetts and you think back on that, the grogginess of sleep kind of cuts out of you in the moment where you realize what day it is today. Today is Thursday, January 25th. Today is the day of the challenger uh, trust banquet and lecture. The day that Mehmet Makriat has invited you to the lecture later this evening. Of course. And as all this clicks in your brain, mm. you look out at the raven, looking in through the window, as the raven ruffles its feathers, and then... Oh, that raven's going somewhere. ...takes off across the sky and over the city of London as we pan away from your luxurious hotel room and we swing the camera. I love when you do this. Over. Yeah. Me too. It's like Spelljammer. It is. Oh. Can I, can I have the pigeon core? Can oh, the my United gosh. Kingdom, we have a new bird. the British Empire. No. Oh my god, Jack the Pigeon, now we have a We, we have, have a raven. raven. We have a new Kennedy bird. the Raven. <laughs> Kennedy the Raven. London, England. Centuries old buildings stand shoulder to shoulder with monuments to modern life. As the capital of England is waking up. As we pan over, we see the great iron and glass arches of Borough Market. Our food stalls are coming to life. The first shoppers of the morning are bustling through in their winter coats. In Piccadilly Circus, gas lamps stand on the street underneath new electric billboards as horse-drawn carriages and motorized double-decker buses alike crowd the roads. Oh, so cool. Wow. Londoners climb the bright steps of St. Paul's Cathedral to attend prayer service as the scent of strong black tea wafts out of the stalls and into St. Pancras Station. So we're going to go to a crossroads. <gasps> Oh, I'm so happy to be oh back. Oh my god! Wow! wow. Smiles! <laughs> Crossroads is who's next? June or Bert? <gasps> you guys are both staying? But oh, Bert. Who's Bert? Wait, who's Bert? I know, literally. Who's Bert? I saw this thing and I was like, who's Bert? Wait, didn't we introduce Bert. our characters and who the, who Robert, the hell's Robert. Bert? Wait, Robert. What? What? It was who's, James. Who's oh. James? Who Bert? Bert? <laughs> How'd that get on Streamlabs? <laughs> you knew? We, you knew! Oh, it does. There is a bird over there. It's bird. But we were not looking. I was not looking. I was. Who, bird? The people want to know more about bird. Looking at Eric. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know, know more about, about bird. Yeah, I want to know about bird. Oh, wait. Is it bird with a U or bird with an E? That's not a name. Bird? Bird? I guess I put with a U, but it's probably an E, right? It's with an E, right? It's with an E. Because it's Robert. Yeah. They still got it. Robert. So don't worry. So I wasn't wrong. But don't I spell it wrong again. Wrong. <laughs> but it was wrong. James, though. Yeah. I thought I heard somebody. Hello? <laughs> Who's there? You guys, it's Carson you jump scare. Yeah, you guys yeah. have... Oh my god, That so jump true. scare is amazing. Yeah. What? I know, I know. Oh, when I it's jumped. Scary I did that. not like that. Last week, we Jack had one shot. In the face. Yeah, Jack did, yeah. like, hold his head. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It scared me bad. It and did feel like if, if you guys didn't see that it was it's at the end of the last the prequel to this, and it seemed like you guys were frozen to me. I came in, you guys were like, we screamed. I think you missed we the screamed. Drama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was flight or Macy's flight or watch went, It was oh, flight or flight. No. Flight or flight. <laughs> the chocolate on this cookie is melted. It's so hot. In here. No, I know. Yeah. It's, I'm like, no, these are melted. Okay, guys. it's Bert. It's Bert. Whoever that is. As we whisk oh, our way across snow-covered London, January, uh, a, a heavy snowfall coming down, covering all the buildings, covering the steps up to townhouses and various things, as we travel not too far from Buckingham Palace itself. On Piccadilly, um, to travel, we see a figure standing, uh, silhouette cut against the front of the display windows, of Hatchard's Bookstore, a century-old bookshop. So we close in on this figure, this uh, figure's uh, bustle by um, Isabel, if you'd like to describe your character. Who is Bert? Um, yeah, so standing in front of the display windows, you see a slight 
man of around in his early 30s and he has a, a mop of black curly hair that's kind of unkempt, tan, the sort of olive skin, um, dark brown eyes, a really kind, earnest expression on his face. He's wearing a coat that's a little bit thinner, uh, a tie and a button-down shirt. The tie um, is a little loose. His whole look is a little kind of disheveled. Um, he's carrying a, a messenger me. bag. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. Black hair party. on a tie. And, <laughs> and playing the character of Jordan Butzer. Who? But his, his hair is like kind of all almost like to his shoulders. It's okay. Like a, so just for distinction. So okay, go, go, cool. <laughs> by the end of this campaign. <laughs> yeah, it'll be you. Uh, he has a messenger bag. Um, he wears wire-rimmed uh, glasses. Uh, he um, is, is kind of scanning all of the books in the display window. Um, he, he looks around um, and pulls a little leather journal out of his bag and makes a couple of notes. As you pull your journal out, <clears throat> making these notes, looking at the different books in the display, um, something catches your eye. Um, a placard, or uh, rather an advertisement in the window uh, of Hatchards, um, advertising a book signing happening this morning by one Archibald Conrad, uh, a name that you recognize, a man that you knew at university, and uh, a school friend of your older brother, as we're going to go to a crossroads right now. Ooh. One thing we about roads. us, we're roading. <laughs> we're gonna be roading. We're gonna be roading. Life's a highway. Sure which direction. No. Life's a highway. Uh, the crossroads is what book did Archibald Conrad just write? The Mummies and Me? Vote Mummies. Or At the Isles of Insanity, a Detective Radcon Mystery? Vote Isles. Oh my god. What if this literally determined our adventure? Yeah. Holy oh, shit. Two different Two completely different. What if? I mean, I mean they I could. Look at him. Look at him. He knows. I would not be. It might determine like, what we run into today. Wait, right. what was the first one? Isles of Insanity. Mummies. Mummies. Or Isles Something. Of mummies and Me. <gasps> mummies and Me. Mummies and Me. That'd be crazy. Yeah, the mummies and me. What was those book series where it's like my but high school algebra teacher is a soup for the teenage soul? <laughs> I don't know why that one. Just I've been thinking about that a lot recently. The have you really? Chicken, the chicken chicken soup? Soup? I have chicken been too. The teenage soul. <laughs> we had another weird synergy thing the other day too. We did. Said. I can't remember. I never read any chicken soup book. It was really Is it a god book? Uh, is it a god book? No, 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 but they do have chicken soup for the... That's it. God lover's soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Chicken soup for, soul. for the dog lover's soul. Like oh. chicken soup yeah. for the... <laughs> right. It is the Isles. Isles. Isles of Insanity. The Isles of Insanity. Yeah. Um, you look and you can see that uh, sort of uh, painted onto this uh, uh, advertisement is the cover of... Um, at the Isles of Insanity, a detective radcon mystery by Archibald Conrad. And uh, you can see that there are several uh, copies of it in, in the display. Um, you can tell it's, it's the fifth in a hugely popular series of horror mystery novels. Um, on the back of it, you can see there's uh, the quotes uh, written on the back cover. Somehow the cult returned. Um, <laughs> As you uh, are looking in the window, you can see that there is a heavy wooden desk uh, in the middle of the store floor. Um, a host of people, uh, uh, book buyers surrounding, uh, approaching as you can see that there is a man, uh, a blonde man with uh, a sort of thin mustache uh, on his upper lip. Um, hair uh, gelled back out of his forehead uh, as uh, he looks up in sort of uh, rumpled finery uh, as if to look like he just threw this on this morning but it is the finest and the latest style um, you see Archibald Conrad's looking up from his book signing and spot you in the window as uh, from behind the glass I kind of smooth back my hair and straighten up my tie a little bit and 
duck into the shop. As you come in, you can see the smell, the dust of these books in this uh, time-honored bookshop. As you come in, you can see that there are people of all sorts gathered around Archibald Conrad asking to sign various copies of the older uh, uh, volumes in this series, uh, the Detective uh, Radcon Mysteries. Uh, as you approach, he says, oh my God, Flynn! Yes! Yes. Uh, it was yes. Uh, uh, Bertie, right? It's uh, Bert, yes. Well, come around here. I'm just taking my lunch. That'll be all for uh, the morning, everybody. But I'm going to take my lunch and uh, I'll be back as soon as, uh, just as quickly as Radcon uh, detects a clue. <laughs> as the crowd ah, ha, 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 laughs their approval. <laughs> as uh, they all kind of go around whispering and kind of looking uh, uh, almost flirtatiously in Archibald Conrad's direction as Archibald <laughs> gestures you behind the table and says, Bertie, Bertie. Yes, Bert, yes, Bert. Oh my goodness, well, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to see you, Bertie. <laughs> Congratulations on your your book, really well done. Oh, right? it's... I've heard of your, your success, of course, and, and congratulations to you. Just... Uh, that's not needed at all, you know, after the... The third one and the fourth one, it all becomes a bit, a bit rote. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the money keeps flowing and that's quite all right with me. So, uh, but, but you're, 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 I remember you publishing short stories in the university press and everything. <laughs> uh, your brother and I would read those late at night, keep each other up. <laughs> How's your writing going? I heard you were in Ohio or something, right? Oh, uh, Massachusetts. Um, yes, I... It yes. published a, a few little bits and bobs, nothing really special, you know, novels and, you know, occult, occult stuff, sort of. Occult stuff? But nothing, oh. you know, nothing of, nothing quite, quite like it, so. Well, your brother and I would, you know, we wouldn't catch a wink of sleep after reading those stories. He had a, <laughs> a knack for it, and, uh, but, uh, You were yes. awfully, uh, awfully close, I, I remember. Yes, well, roommates, uh, <laughs> you know, we had uh, <laughs> plenty of late nights together going out and, uh, you know, uh, London, Cambridge, Oxford, all these places. <laughs> they, weren't, uh, they weren't safe from the two of us. <laughs> but I'm sure you heard all about that from him. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Well, I, 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 I applaud you being out there. And uh, you said it was New Jersey? <laughs> Yes. Well, yes. I think that's so wonderful to get some uh, new sights and everything. It, it feeds the mind. You don't you don't want to be part of all this rat race and everything. Yeah. It's it's all a bit much. They're sending me uh, pretty far at this point. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, I'm going on a bit of a book tour right now for the oh, the, the new one, the Isles of Insanity. Oh, yes. um, but I kind of pick one up and turn it over. It looks in. It looks her. Uh, you need to check it out. I regret I haven't, hasn't made its way to, uh, yeah, New Jersey yet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will soon. But uh, you know, I at this point, uh, upon the fifth one or so, it all comes out pretty, pretty easy at this point. Mm. Uh, the real work is when they send you off on these trips. It's. Uh, Where are you uh, off to? Uh, I'm on a bit of a book signing tour, you know going to all the old locales, Shakespeare and Co, on Paris. we traveling across the continent a bit into the mainlands, you know. <laughs> it's not too bad. I have uh, some connects in each city, yeah. if you will. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm uh, actually about to um, uh, kind of rifle through my coat a little bit and then f forget about it. And then I, uh, I, I'm actually about to go on a, a bit of a journey myself. Um, Is that right? A train travel of sorts. You know, my brother was, well, he was supposed to be over here, but he, he needed to stay back and he had a bit of um, a difficult time. Uh, well, he's, he's really doing quite fine now. Um, he's, he, you know, but I decided to take his place, uh, take his ticket and come back to England. Yes, you're far from your new home now, aren't you? Right, but of course, you know, I'm but what sort Frontier of things are you writing or... now? Are you uh, oh, no, no, no. just keeping uh, people like up you, at night, like still you. chilling through the spine? Oh, um, well, uh, just, uh, you know, as I said, bits and bobs. Uh, a novella, 
a couple of novels. They haven't done, you know, unbelievably well, but they, they, a, a moderate success. A moderate <laughs> success for New Jersey. In the States. <laughs> um, for New Jersey, Ohio. So, uh, yes, I, I would say that, uh, you know, a comfortable living, a comfortable living, which is all we can ask for, but um, I'm always interested in, in you know, more and uh, it just, you know, I don't know if I could handle all of this sort of gesture uh, to the people. Uh, but you seem to be, you seem to be handling it very well. Uh, it's all a bit stressful, you know. I think that a comfortable, <laughs> moderate living, that's what you should, you should aspire to, not all this... Fame, it's all a bit more trouble than it's worth as an assistant comes out and hands him a hot cup of tea, perfectly so. brewed, and uh, a, a small box of little cakes and things. Oh. He kind of takes them and just absentmindedly sips the tea. So it's, it's all just too much trouble. I would love to uh, buy a copy of your your latest. Oh, well. Um, you know, and, and support don't you. Don't. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> as he goes back and he reaches underneath and grabs a copy and kind of brushes it off, opens it up. Uh, gives a quick signature and says, <laughs> for you, 25% off. Oh, oh my god. god. Right. Right, of course. Of course. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very gen- generous. Please. I kind of rifle around to find my... Archibald is over party. Oh, yeah. Billfold <laughs> and pull up. That would be... Sorry, five quid? Or, or, I don't know what you want. Uh, just a few, a few pounds will do. Right. And kind of pull out three very crumpled notes and hand them to him. As he takes them and he says, well, it's always a pleasure. And, um, uh, you know, if your brother is uh, coming over uh, back to the homelands, then I have to know about my travels and maybe we can meet up and uh, have a good old time. You let him know. I let him know. As uh, an assistant comes back over and... Uh, Do I get any, any sense of, like... A little listen track, like yeah, listen for gay. Yeah. Yeah. Listen for gay. <laughs> Go ahead and make uh, either a listen or a psychology. We, at this point, we should make it a skill. And the listen gay. 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 We now have we, have a we tend to determine hotness, and we have the gay dar. There are uh, there are a couple of empty, empty ones. Slots. There are some yeah. empty yeah. slots yeah. for gay dar. For... Yes, and the fact that they have credit rating and not. Gaydar is helpful. okay with this <laughs> group of people, with this group of investigators and their particular interests. Why don't we do a three d six times five, and yes. that'll be your Gaydar. Three d six times five. 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 Same as Lock. This is this is so it'll always life. be your Gaydar. Yeah, right? my Gaydar is. <gasps> Fire. Oh, so is mine. Oh my god, mine too. What is it? What, okay, hold on. Mine's 65. 16 times 5. <gasps> 80. Uh, 16 times 5, too. Oh. 16, 16 times 5. 16 oh. times 5 is all. And let me wait. And the whole thing comes happening? I have the worst one. So are we just calling this Gator? Yeah, I put it as Call it what you it's will. You know? So okay, 65 okay. and then half is the hard success, Carson, right? Oh, couple, you cocked it. I yeah. cocked it. 40. And then, okay. Well, what's 16 times 5? 80. So 80, 40, 20? That's right yeah. for June. Yeah. No, 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 no it's oh. one fifth. So oh. it's 16 for the hard success. You are so good. What are we, 80, 40? <laughs> Carson, 16. You... That's impressive. Right? Yeah, 16. Yeah. Yeah. So we, oh, but it's yeah. half for the, just a hard success? Half for hard and one oh. fifth for the ultimate. I'm having fun. I don't know if I do. <laughs> I'm going to always know what's going I'm obsessed gay. with this character. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Oh my God, I'm in love with him. Did you see the name of your brother and I missed it? James. James Flynn. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I think. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, no, Putting it all together. Thinking, right. Right. Putting the pieces no, together. You missed it, yeah. Um, Red so. tape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me just... Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, we have a cork board here. Um, with red eventually. string to connect all of our clues. There'll just be a mass over here that's 71. gay. <laughs> with a <some laughs> bunch of style. <laughs> From gay art. What'd you yeah, get? 71. You know, so all of our no, strings. So, uh, <laughs> unclear. You always <laughs> knew that James. What does it mean? Uh, James and Archibald were like famously like <laughs> close. Um, I think you always heard stories about them going out like on the town to you know get their flirt on, get their dance on, that sort of thing. Um, Archibald James and James, Bert's brother. Um, um, beyond that, I would say that that failed check is significant in as far as the way that you were 
blocked out of the personal life of James and of his social life in university and the way that um, you're reminded of the sort of distance that existed and exists between the two of you and just the differences, the differences of memory, the differences of personality that sometimes just stay with you. Well, Archibald, it was. I, I will certainly give James my your. Re, I mean, not my your regards. Regards. Next time, I I I, uh, I write to oh, him. He's everything. I'm fall in love with this boy. Uh, uh, much appreciated, Bertie. As the assistant comes up to him and says, uh, "Yes, sir. You, you are due for tea with the Duke of York." And he uh, says, "Oh, I'm uh, so sorry, Bertie. You'll have to excuse me. I'm taking a bit of a lunch break here. Uh, but I'll be back to sign more books if you care to purchase more for your friends." Sure. Yes, it was lovely to see you. Uh, really, such a wonderful welcome um, home, I guess, to London. Please, the pleasure is all mine. I'll be seeing you. See, departs. Um, a little. Quick check around the bookstore. I just kind of go over to where my name is. And oh, well, let's follow that chord. This is our first mystery. <gasps> yeah. Follow the chord. Should you <laughs> had all the clues. <laughs> hmm. Should we like unplug? Are you sure she's plugged classic? in? It is plugged in. Uh, here, I have my cord. And it's just as long. I think it's just dying anyway. Suck it. Oh. Do you want to try that? New studio. New what studio. Is that? New studio. studio. Is it like a big box? Studio. New There's studio. No box. It's a computer that we're plugged into. Oh, maybe it would be better to plug into like a. Oh is it possible? What do you say? Oh, it doesn't feel amazing. Wow. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. We're learning. Um, I think the only option is to maybe just use everyone's phones. But mine is at thirteen percent. Mine's been over here charging. Let's see. She's... Do you have the app that we use? Yeah. Hey. It's the same wow. week, uh, e- Epoch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Just give us two minutes. And we're learning. We're living. We're laughing. We're loving. Come oh on. my God! I wish. I wish. I don't. Know. I would you never wish. What you, need for her. you want to do the bellows? You bet. I'm you guys keep that bellows going. This is a little She's segment on, like, we call the bellows, yeah. where <laughs> Isabel <laughs> opens <laughs> and closes the door. <laughs> regular <laughs> segment. Um, so that we get a little bit of air. Bellows being the name of the, we the rolled fire thing we're for, yeah, yeah. We rolled for what seat we would get, oh, yeah. and I didn't know this would come with you this. You didn't know you were... Yeah, right. like this, yeah. You didn't know you no, took the job off. It's offer. closest to Bella. It's closest to the wind. <laughs> How does everyone feel about their seat? I like the seat. I, I like the seat. seat. I like my seat a lot. I like seeing everybody here. I had last here. pick. You, you did but like, I like my seat pretty well. I know. I mean, the thing about this new setup, every seat is good. Yeah. Like, before yeah, we had the little yes. corner set up, and that was bad. Um, three, five, six, eight, nine, zero. You're kind of there is no more. Well, Sorry, I don't think so. Like, so I don't think more anyone wants to get my phone passcode. Pass uh, but there is more gin. Do you want some more gin? I think I'm okay. okay. We also. That'll I mean, there might be there might be a, a mixer in there. Three, five, six, eight. I, you want me to do a look before we? This is the time. Look. Let me just take a look. How's everybody doing in the chat? How's everyone in the chat? I'm not looking at that. I'm gonna look. If you ever meet me and well, steal my phone, you have my password. Interlude. Write it down. So? Write it down. <laughs> you guys. Uh, I'm having a blast. I, know, I love, this world is so love, amazing. love this new room. I love that yeah. Eric is right there. I know. That's yeah. crazy. Eric I used you. to be like behind. Okay, we're back. It's why aren't they like. We're good. You guys, the okay. studio looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. To kind of realize that, like, just how obstructed I was. Yeah. In the past, or like Can the DMC make, was. Yeah. Uh, I need my cord back. Um, for mixers, though, for good yeah. news, uh-huh. we have word, pickle juice, so. hey. burrata, and 2% milk. Well, oh. I think Better. we're cooking. All yes. three. All three. 2% milk <laughs> is going to be it. Um, sound off in the chat if you're drinking gin and 2% milk. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you were checking to see Bert Flynn if. <laughs> the way you did that. <laughs> a tall chunk. Um, yeah. <clears throat> sorry. Thanks for your patience. Love you. Yeah. We're yeah sorry about well. that. Still learning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I hope. New <laughs> setup. Growing pain. I hurt my growing pain. pain. Growing pain. Um, um, yeah. I'm we're having just, a growth spurt. I, I'm like in a way that's really not obvious, but I'm just kind of scanning where the F's are in the kind of mystery section. 
Uh, just can where the F's are. Looking through, trying to find, uh, looking for Flynn. Um, I'm gonna say, go ahead and make a luck check with a bonus die. So it's basically with advantage. You're gonna roll the tens die um, twice. And you're gonna take the lower number. Just barely. 62 a success. Nice. As you're looking through Hatchard's, um, this legendary old bookshop on Piccadilly, um, searching through all of the different books, just the wide array of uh, antique tomes as well as new publishings. Um, you look and you find three um, pristine condition um, volumes of your book of short stories, which is called... Which is called Disappearances in the Dark. By Robert Flynn. By Robert Flynn. Mm. And I just kind of give a little nod to myself. Hmm. Mm. I love them. And then mm -hmm. make my way out of the shop. So you make your way out of the shop. Interesting. Taking a breath. Just seeing those three spines with your name on it. Knowing that your words and your work are out there in the world walk out the door and into the swiftly falling snow out onto Piccadilly as the wind brushes by you, picks up and blows over the rooftops of London as we're going to go to another crossroads now. Whoa. Crossroads is now who's next, Vera or June? Seeing anything on the crossroads. Let me refresh. Yeah. Let me refresh. Yeah. Let me refresh. Yeah, still, still nothing. I am so excited no. to meet Vera. Let me close the poll and let me cancel the poll. I'm like now terrified. <laughs> and no, let I me put it back up. Either. We're starting the poll over from the beginning. You didn't, you didn't feel now who's next, Vera or about June? That? Yeah, actually, I would love to hear about this. Yeah, I think that I was just like I was really interested in playing like at first like someone who was like really masculine and like suave, like, suave and whatever, and then playing it, I was like. I'm kind of playing like, not to like, 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 but like very toxically masculine, kind of like over everybody. And I was like, that's actually not someplace I, that was like you fun to be for yeah. a session. And then I was like, that's actually not someplace I want to be for this whole That's campaign. fun for a one shot, yeah. 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 It's good for to context, be. Isabel played someone different in our in the prequel. Call of Cthulhu. Oh, his prequel. Rather, maybe. We'll see. And then I was like, what are, I always kind of go for characters too, where I'm like looking for some kind of a different energy in, in my life. And I was like, this is just like, it was really fun. I like liked it. I wasn't yeah. like I was just like, well, oh, this isn't the long campaign. But on energy, you need to like sit in right now. Yeah, yeah. Love to you James. You have such like a good. I, well, I feel like you have such a good That's why I'm asking. I always love hearing okay. about your character creation. Wait, real quick. That this character reminds me of Ernie from Spelljammer. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ernie. definitely. Ernie. Ernie. Oh my god. That's crazy. Sisters. <laughs> I do need to see the Bert and Ernie no, like no, no, no. art next to each other because I think they're very I wanna see yes. the art and I wanna do a one shot. Yes! Oh, I wanna do a Bert and Ernie. Glasses, cross -body I'm like Ernie looking at Bert right now and I'm like, yeah. wait. <laughs> wait. That's it's very Ernie. Ernie. That is Ernie. Ernie. It's human <laughs> human <laughs> Ernie. <laughs> Right, but Except what I really want to play <laughs> is Ernie okay, from Spelljammer. Okay, I, this is like a weird thing to say, but like every time I tried to get AI and like eventually we'll have all the money to pay the artists to do our character drawing. Please, yeah. yeah. But every time I tried to get AI to like create who I wanted for Bert, like obviously AI makes everyone like so, so hot. So bad. And like yeah, it's they so hard. kept making him look like Penn Badgley, like over and over again. Like <laughs> exactly. So and I was you like, didn't want yeah. to play Penn Badgley. Not right. <laughs> 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 he still kind of does. Subscribe to Badgley Brown. Yeah, on Instagram. Cute. Check out <laughs> Badgley Brown. Yeah, I, I, I did make a man who's like right in the line of my type. <laughs> yeah. so earlier I got a comment that said is a bird. Which is is a bird. Oh. oh. And Jordan plus Ernie. Oh. <laughs> That one's a, a bit of a, a, bit, a, a bit of a stretch, stretch isn't it? A bit more a bit of a, a stretch, isn't it? I'm going to write that on your mailbox. Jordan, Jordan Lady <laughs> Vera. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Um, as we, we the wind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bellows. 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 As the wind bellows check. Whoa, drifts wind. up. As the wind bellows across London, the day continuing to pass um, as the morning passes on into um, early afternoon. 
We travel up and over the cityscape of London. Um, we travel past Buckingham Palace, uh, along the snow-blanketed hills and paths of Hyde Park, until we reach a block directly across from the park, where sits a beautiful, luxuriously appointed house. Jordan, if you'd like to describe the house and also where your character oh is seated in the house for tea, right on the park. in addition to your character. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the house, why okay. not? So, if you've ever been to Hyde Park, there's a, a stretch of houses that are yeah, beautifully ivory white. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, and she lives in what would I would assume would be the first one that everybody followed uh, suit wow. to match Lady Vera's <laughs> austere um, house decoration and um, architectural design. So it's one of the biggest white houses on the block. Um, I would say uh, very large windows that um, have a little semicircle bay ness to them. Um, it's pretty It's pretty austere. Uh, there's a red carpet that comes outside of the house. Wow. There are two guards that are in pretty traditional like 1850s garb that stand outside uh, 24-7. <laughs> um, what is 1850s guard garb? <laughs> Like, like stripes, stripes, like, like big shoulders. I'm thinking about like big, little big poofy, big poof thighs, big poof uh, thighs, stockings, pads. a little bit of a shoulder pad, um, but they're the poofs as well, and the little uh, hats as well, like the hats with the feather, yeah. um, and wow. large spears. <laughs> as we walk in, Lady Vera is sitting in um, her study. She had there's a his and her study in the house. Oh my god! But her study is uh, a little bit more dense. There's a lot more books in there than Hubert's, which is her, her husband's. Um, oh, another bird. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, another bird. Oh. I didn't think about that. Oh, so dreamy. I didn't know that you were gonna be a bird. Heard him mentioned. <laughs> maybe maybe you did mention him. I haven't mentioned him because no. I created him. He is irrelevant. He irrelevant. First, irrelevant. Like he really is not important. Um, Hubert is a hunter, so there's a lot of taxidermy on the walls oh in his his study. But in um, Vera's study, there's a lot more books. There's a lot more paintings. There's a lot more uh, mm. books filled with her own poetry as well. Um, right now, she's sitting at a small circular table um, with a lot of uh, intricate Italian-like baroque kind of uh, design on it, mm -hmm. um, and she's sipping uh, a cup of tea and eating a digestive. Incredible. And there's a little spread of small cakes um, and finger sandwiches as well. And if you'd like to describe what Lady Vera looks like. Yeah. Um, Josephine Baker. Queen. Josephine Baker. Greta Garbo. Wow. Say that. Clara Bow. I'm looking at her right now. They all wish oh. <laughs> they were Lady Vera, uh, okay? They wish they got an invitation like, to her party, but they didn't because they're period. not important Just enough. Wow. Wow. So Lady Vera is the height of height of all London oh and God. surrounding areas, high society. You see her right now, she is in uh, kind of a, a, a bedroom look. So she's wearing very fine silks. Um, she always wears a fur uh, Arctic fox coat oh um, around the house because there's a little bit of a draft. Um, hair is a little bit down. I would assume that a lady's maid is currently putting it up into um, a tight bun on either side here and then a little bit of a wafty like top here um, as they're also putting in uh, little jewels and dec uh, decorations and putting on a brooch on her coat so that she looks a little bit more austere. She's always wearing stockings and she's always wearing kitten heels. <laughs> very rosy cheeks, a little small uh, pluck nose. She's very short. Uh, she's 56, so she's um, gray haired, but very austere, busty, gorgeous. Waited on hand and foot in your London property. Here, as we're going to go to a crossroads. Uh, uh. Crossroads. Did she die? <laughs> is she dead? <laughs> Crossroads is who is Lady Vera having for tea? A doctor, vote doctor, or a duchess, vote duchess. Mm. I'm gonna cut this off in 60 seconds because I didn't do a countdown. <laughs> You're bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. You're so bad. You're, bad. I'm so You're bad like that. Has anyone seen it? Where did my dice go? 
Do you want to put your letter on the board? What do you mean, mm, that? Mm, sure. But it's not really 100. Oh, it's, it's in my dream. mind. Well, I'm feeling like a dream. Forget it. Forget it. This is your mind place, a la Alan Wake 2. I was kidding. Data race. I was kidding. And you're hilarious like that. Yeah, no, it was a good joke. Love sitting by you again. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Missed ya. Good seeing ya. Missed all of you though. I know. It's yeah, been a long it's been time. time. It's been so long, this room is so. I was like, since we've seen yeah, each other. It is. I don't know. I just feel like. <laughs> no, since no, we like no. really played. Like played. Really yeah. All right. Yeah. We travel Duchess. to another world it's together. Furby. It is like it's Duchess. Furby. It's, Furby. it's Duchess Furby. And wouldn't you know? She's telling me London, London Bridge is falling down. Falling down. <laughs> I get my wall up. How the earth quakes <laughs> under your feet. Um, How much gene do we build? <laughs> <laughs> Looking across the small round table that you uh, that your staff has laid out here with finger <laughs> snacks, uh, digestives, tea, all the point in the early afternoon, um, you're having tea with Lady Margaret, uh, Duchess of Jagging Fox. Wait, um, Lady Margaret of Lady Jagging Margaret, Duchess of Jagging Fox. <laughs> Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Jagging fox? Jagging fox. Great. Jeggings. <laughs> Jeggings fox. Jeggings fox. Jeggings fox. Jeggings fox. Jeggings fox. Yeah. Megan fox. Um, as she is just um, getting to a culmination of recounting her travels to you, mm. where she's been off with uh, her husband, the Duke, um, off. Um, on, on quite a journey across the world. Um, India is just uh, more uh, splendid and fascinating than you could possibly oh, yeah. imagine. Uh, excuse me, darling. Excuse I, me, I'm, I'm gonna ring a bell. Stanley! Stanley, uh, full coat and tails, uh, Stanley. Uh, quickly walks into the room, <laughs> opening a, a, a heavy mahogany door and comes to, uh, yes, madam. Yes, so, the cucumber sandwiches. Oh, yes, madam. <laughs> Is there a different spread on them? The chef uh, wished to use a bit of an aioli this time. Is it not to your liking? Now describe to me an aioli. Aioli, uh, as the chef described it, uh, very eggy. All right. Uh, from now on, I would like a cream cheese spread, please. Cream cheese, as you wish, your lady. You can take these away. They're not to my liking. Of course, your lady. <laughs> As he uh, picks it up and whisks it away. Um, oh, uh, Lady Margaret, was there anything that you would like? Oh, well, Stanley is here. Yeah, I think that perhaps um, a bit more cream for my tea. As soon as, as, as you wish. And we'll take two vermouths, please. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Your ladyship. Ring the bell if you want anything more. I know how it works. Of course. <laughs> As he turns around and departs Take from the room. I'm not with us too. Uh, Lady Margaret looks at and says, such a staff you have in this house. I can see why you never leave. <laughs> yes, that's oh. very true. Uh, why would I leave if I've built such a palace? Yes, I think that I have the utmost respect for uh, anyone who spends time, especially across from the park. Uh, you know, anything that you need to see is in the park, wouldn't you say so? Yes. It's lovely. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, though, the elephant rides <laughs> were simply to die for. Uh, the Duke was... <laughs> he couldn't stop crying from laughing at how they would uh, dip their trunks into the water and then spray it all over themselves uh, just to keep cool, you know. Sense. It's another world, yes. almost. Yes. Uh, one that I, I, you couldn't possibly understand unless you went there. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I know that you're very well read, so I'm sure that you have some understanding of this. I'm part, but, but sorry. Pardon me, what did you say? I, I, I said that you're very well read, so I'm sure that you have some understanding of, you know, the wider world. <laughs> you know, um, when I read a book, I, um, I could visualize a lot of these things, but I find it duller and duller every single time I read because 
I could read about uh, King Arthur taking Camelot and all these beautiful trees and gorgeous landscapes, but I'm not there, you know. I could read about the first uh, Inquisition, but I'm not in Spain. Uh, I haven't been outside of England. It's not the same, you know. Yes. I didn't mean to uh, insult you in any way, Lady Vera. <laughs> I'm just curious, uh, Lady Margaret, why are you here? I, because I suppose I was excited about my travels and wished to share it with you. Uh, it's not every day that one travels abroad. <laughs> But you must, you must join the Dukins, myself, next time. We are traveling to the Cape of Horn. It should be quite an adventure. I assure you, if I uh, ever take such a trip, I would find better company. I see. Well, I uh, hope that you... Um, <laughs> I hope that you're having a lovely stay in London uh, and the city, and I, I, I wanted to say... Yes? I, I do hope that your son is doing all right. Mm. <laughs> I've heard that he well, caught a bit of a cold. Yes, oh. a, a long sickness, but I'm making sure his affairs are in order. Of course, mm. of course, and mm. there's no one better to... Take care of him, then. His own mother. Yes, yes. One such as yourself. Thank you. Uh, you must call on us next time you're in Coxworth. She kind of looks at her bag and everything, takes a bit of a hint and says, Of, of course. <laughs> I will make a plan of it, and you must call on me whenever you're planning your next international travel uh, try to be as good a company as possible we do have a, a lot of insights upon our, all of our different sort of escapades around the world oh yes trust me i would rather bring stanley and he passes gas often <laughs> i see well <laughs> I brought home a gift for yeah. you, and of course oh, I will be gift. seeing you in yes. Coxworth as yes. she pulls up. You can up. leave that in the foyer. I see. As she holds Damn. up, uh, she holds up a thin package, paper wrapped, uh, with a small label on it. Um, immediately, you can tell that these are uh, uh, ornamented uh, knitting needles, um, packaged with the label uh, uh, for the esteemed homebody as she uh, takes it with her and says, Beach. I will leave it in the foyer. The pleasure was mine, Lady Vera, as she gives a slight curtsy as she stands up and grabs her bag. I assure you, Lady Margaret, it was a time that I had. <laughs> of course. <laughs> she curtsies again, turns, and Stanley is there to <laughs> open the door as she departs out oh. into the foyer, uh, leaving... What a party we were. Leaving... <laughs> The package on the bench in the foyer as the doors are opened by the spear-wielding guards. She uh, walks out and you can see a horse-drawn carriage uh, waiting out there for her as the door shuts. Uh, Stanley! Yes, madam. Do you know when the incinerator goes on? <laughs> uh, the incinerator is not due until sunset, but we will fire it up early if that is your wish, madam. Yes, and you could put whatever was in the foyer in that, please. Of course, madam. Ooh, damn. As he goes, the door opens, you can see him pick up the package and descend into the cellar below. As the door shuts, and you're alone damn, damn, damn. in yes. this room. I'm going to search around and look at my books and see if I can find one on India. As you look, um, you can see that there is... Uh, through, uh, reminded that there is uh, a new uh, manuscript sent to you pre-publication of E.M. Forrester's latest The Passage to India. Mm. Um, as you pick that up and see the sort of loosely bound manuscript. I hesitate to open it, but 
I kind of flip through a little bit, reading a few passages, and then just kind of take in the place I'm in, the atmosphere I'm in. And I feel really stifled and very stuffy. And I will turn to my lady's maid and say, Could you um, put together an outfit for me? I would like to go out. Of course, your ladyship. Thank you. At this moment. Something in a uh, turquoise blue. Mm. As you wish. She curtsies and departs, heading to your vast wardrobe to prepare a little something for the evening. As you turn from the vibrancy of Forrester's passages and look out and you see the snow steadily piling up against the window of your estate, looking out onto Hyde Park as the wind blows across London as we pan away from the Wankington estate. We fly. Fist much Winkington. Winkington. Fist much Winkington. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. What an iconic scene. That, that was, was real. Wow. You, her talking about the gardens and you saying, yes. Yes. It looks like it was exactly <laughs> like, um, what's her name? Uh, Azalea Banks. It's like, yeah. They say you make music for gays. Yeah. yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. What well, now? now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. As we cross oh, across oh. London to find our final character to meet um, this evening. Um, Let's go lesbians. <laughs> dive bar. <laughs> As we <laughs> drift across London, um, as the afternoon is getting on to late afternoon, um, sort of the later part of uh, the tea hour here, um, snow still piling up as light is just beginning to fade across London. We sweep east over uh, St. Paul's, over um, the different neighborhoods, and we go north um, towards the area around St. Pancras Station, uh, the train station around here. Um, and we close in on a stall selling black tea. Um, for those who are not <clears throat> fortunate or um, societally beholden enough to be attending a fine afternoon tea service uh, complete with uh, the most delicate of China, here we have um, a bit more of a working class crowd lined up at the stall. Um, receiving their uh, disposable cups of black tea for the afternoon. As we close in on the various figures in long trench coats, um, winter wear uh, huddled against the cold, we see one figure receiving a cup of black tea. Macy, if you'd like to describe your character for us. Yes, uh, June is receiving her tea. I think... Uh... Even though it's cold out, she probably would have uh, taken her coat off for a second and tucked it between her legs and unclipped the top half of her overalls and let that hang to relax. Um, June is a woman in her early 20s. She's tall and quite muscular and um, has a sharp face, a severe face. In contrast to Vera, I'm sure, <laughs> no, no makeup, um, dark hair that would be in like a messy bun, and she's probably dirty. She's probably sweaty and greasy. I think she just finished a shift and um, uh, has uh, cool rings on, very dirty hands, dirt under her nails. Um, she takes her coat off and uh, uncups overalls and puts it back on and is kind of picking out some dirt under her nails as she approaches the front of the stall. Approaching as uh, 
the person in the stall just takes a few uh, pence, not even that much, and uh, hands you across a cup of steaming black tea uh, to you, having just finished uh, picking up a shift of work here in London, finding it easy to blend in with the workaday class here. Um, we're going to go to a crossroads. <gasps> It, every time I gasp. I know, I know. I'm going to predict it. Crossroads is going to be who sees home first? <gasps> June sees her. Vote June. Or she sees June. Vote she. <laughs> Bear with me. Vote June. Ladies and gentlemen. Or vote she. 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 <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. She. <laughs> I know, me too. I, I, make a tea I know, run, I'm getting but there. But I want to know who well, you are. I don't think I can. I'll do that and then I'll make a tea run. Well, I and by have that to I mean the restroom so I can go, go around the corner. When I go up anyway. Okay. Unless you are she, she. Yeah, what is it? That's from uh, Notting Hill, yeah. You know, and like, like, there's like the whole like, 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 one. It's like Elvis Costello. Like, the whole montage of Billy Wilder. It's the song. beginning and the end of the movie. Maybe we just both. Well, I think I should say. Did you want to go? No, you go, we'll pull you in. I don't know who you are. Oh. You know who I am. Wow, you guys, I this Baby, this calendar that has the the um, the days of like every day that we might play for like the rest of the campaign. Like wow. we've got And it's a hundred years exactly till today. Yeah, yeah. Before. Every one of our Call of Cthulhu's has been a hundred years to the day, I believe. Just about except for the last one, I think. Because oh. there's a little just pr- prologue to this. Does. But like pretty much every other one, yeah. Oh, never mind. I was gonna ask if the day actually lined it up, but Yeah. We don't know the day of the week it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's January twenty fifth. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I do know. Oh, it's yeah. it's um. We've flubbed history a little bit to make Thursday. Did you really? To make January twenty fifth, you uh, made nineteen twenty four. I didn't make that. I made Jean it nineteen twenty four. Um, oh. But Thursday is Janvier, oh. Février, Mars. So that the days of the week line up exactly oh, with twenty twenty four. May. Oh baby, you speak French? May. So cool. What's May. going on over there? <laughs> No. <laughs> we, to be fair, this might be the only day that it lines up perfectly. Okay. Um, really? Just because, who knows? It might get off. Sure. Who sure, sure. knows? It might not take a week to get from. Well, because Ferrier might. From, from London days. to Paris. <laughs> from London, Paris, maybe. Tokyo. Uh, we're going to Tokyo? Uh, maybe. Uh, um, as you grab your hot tea. Um, folks just sort of uh, cavorting with each other, um, the people that you've just finished a shift with, uh, just engaged in conversation, drinking the hot tea, warming up uh, with gloved hands um, as you're uh, sipping this fragrant black tea um, as you take a sip and feel the warmth go down into your chest, you feel a tap on your shoulder and turning around um you see um, a woman in furs, long furs, with a walking cane, um, with uh, curled dark hair um, and a bit of a befuddled expression. She looks at you as you see um, Susanna's mother, Hannah. She says, June, I, <laughs> I, th- I th- thought that I recognized you uh, <laughs> I was taking a stroll <laughs> yeah what are, you, what are you doing here I'm <laughs> I have the same question for you I, we've just arrived by cruise we? the family yes all of you? Uh, all of us yes although um me, myself, and uh, Francis are uh, staying in London. Um, Francis has some uh, some work, some BMC business here in London. Um, right, right, right. I, I can't uh, believe you're here. I... I um... How are you, Jim? I'm good, I'm good. Um... Her eyes kind of drift down and look your outfit, the coat between your legs, the dirt under the fingernails, drinking from the disposable cup of black tea. Her eyes trace over and 
hands locked back with yours. What brings you across the pond? Um, you know, I just uh, needed a change, I guess. I thought, uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I, I you, you know, I ended up in New York. I don't know if you know that, but, um, I think I heard something about that, yes. Yeah, um, well, I was working in New York for a bit, and it was just a lot like Boston, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I saved up a little bit and was able to make it over here and, and work in, and uh, just right to the people I'm drinking with. I, I got, uh, got some people I like here, and I don't know, I'm just going to see how it goes here, I guess. I didn't know that you guys came to London much, or I... We don't. I didn't know. This is uh, our first time in some years, and it was uh, Susanna's first time. She's on holiday in Italy. Um, oh, okay. She traveled on, but... Okay. As you well, yeah, just so you know, I, I might not be here that long, just so you know, and you can tell Francis, like, I might... I might I was kind of thinking, um, I don't know, I'm already over here, I already paid the fare. She, I might, you know, see what else. Um, you look at her, she's a little taken aback. This this woman in her 50s, perhaps. Um, uh, a bit of wear and care on her face as she kind of winces at that and says, I don't want you to feel that we are in any way rushing you out of this city. That's not my intention at all. And, you know, Francis is busy with work. I think that it's not that small of a city. I right. think that it'll be entirely fine. I, are, are you doing okay? Yeah. Oh, so drama. Yeah, of course. Why... Yeah, of course. You know, it, uh, fortunately, I'm already used to the cold. Uh, there's good people where I work, you know. It, I'm liking seeing the rest of the world, but I'm kind of finding a lot of it is the same, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It's all the same to some extent. I am um, here as... She reaches into her pocket and uh, she pulls out a pair of gloves and she hands it to you. Oh, These no, are no, I, I couldn't. I, I... Please, I, I don't need them. Uh, okay, thank you. She hands the gloves to you and uh, kind of pulls the furs around herself a little tighter. Can I at least get you a tea in return? It's surprisingly good. That's okay. Just came from tea and it's just having a bit of a stroll. Right. I'm um, enjoying the scenery, and if you can believe it, it, seems like they're getting more snow than in Massachusetts. Oh, really? But um, I. Uh, uh, I just. If you don't mind my saying, I just want to thank you. Um, You know, I left in such a hurry to get to New York. I was, I, I uh, didn't get to thank you for everything from over the years, and uh, I think my life would have looked a lot different without you. So, thanks for the gloves. Thanks for coming up and saying hey. And as you give this, thanks. You go ahead and make a spot hidden check for me. I need to know everything. This has to be. I know. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like literally, I'm, really I'm, like, really I'm literally like <laughs> living a movie. Like this is uh, so no. detailed. Big you could, fail. You could, you could push it. Oh yeah, how does that work? I roll Finish. again, but um, maybe. you can roll it again. I would say the risk that you run here. Um, 
so basically if you fail a push roll so you can roll again uh that's a push roll um if you fail the push it's basically like a critical failure on your initial roll uh, meaning there will be consequences that are more serious than failing a normal roll um i would say that you you might risk being a bit invasive and being noticed for being so if you push this roll and i failed again her head kind of goes down um, as you give this thanks to her and um, as her eyes come back up um, you kind of catch yourself with like a cocked head like searching into her eyes staring hard at her um, possibly in an almost uninviting way in an aggressive way as she looks at you she takes a step back a bit she says, um, it was good seeing you. Yeah. And as she turns and walks away, she stops. She turns around. She looks at you and says, she's in Venice, the Hotel Danielli. Goodbye, June. She turns around and she walks off down the street, strolling with her walking cane into the snow, turning a corner and disappearing. Oh my god. June, uh, I don't know, we'll maybe walk away for a second and pretend to grab something from another stall and then kind of collect herself and then go back over to the rest of the her co-workers and friends she was having tea with and as your mind swims, coming back, your tea is just a little less hot than it was before. You can see little flecks of snow melting on the surface of it. So you take a sip. Your mind goes back, back to Boston, back to Massachusetts, and back to the memory of what day it is today and what plans you have for this evening. It's the snow drift. There's a lot going on. Yeah. 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 And as Ooh. the light continues to dim over the city of London, the wind picks up and we follow it over St. Pancras Station. We see it drift over Shoreditch. We see it drift over the River Thames. Snow falling across all of London as the day carries on and on until we find ourselves at the event of the evening. Mm. Oh, I can't wait to meet The you masquerade guys. ball. No. Uh, what a kooky group of characters. I know. I'm, I'm invested I'm so best hard. Best intro yeah. of any season yes. ever. Yeah, that Please, was, this, like, one yes. this one or this <laughs> one? <laughs> As we drift one, past each of the body. characters <laughs> out of St. Banker's Station, um, we drift over, over the city, um, the wind blowing past uh, uh, past the various uh, monuments, past Trafalgar Square, past Piccadilly Circus. We see um, again, looking through the window briefly uh, at the hotel uh, Claridge's. We see Clayton and Faye getting ready for the night. We drift over Piccadilly Circus to see uh, uh, Bert walking through the streets. We drift over Kensington to see the Wankington uh, estates, uh, the Duchess uh, in her fineries, in her uh, teal blue dress, dressing for the evening as we continue on over London. We find ourselves not too far from the Duchess's estate at the Imperial Institute in Kensington. As you all begin to arrive one by one at this imposing stone building. <laughs> We're arriving. Arrival happening. This yes. imposing stone building with austere arches 
and spacious galleries. This building, which serves as an exhibition hall of sorts for the showcasing of the British Empire itself. Guests are arriving as snow continues to fall and the light dims completely from the sky. Gas lamps now lighting up these frozen streets of London. Guests arriving by the dozens dressed to the nines in evening wear, tuxedos, gowns, splendid dress uniforms, glittering jewels, gleaming sabers to people's sides and waxed mustaches. People gather inside of the Imperial Institute in the Upper East Gallery where the exhibitions have been cleared away in favor of this event space. As you all arrive one by one in the space, um, all of you can see that there are long tables set up in front of uh, a beautifully appointed lectern at the head of the room. Uh, the room. And as you each enter, I'll um, start with Clayton and Faye. Um, uh, uh, what or who are you wearing tonight? Uh, Clayton, <laughs> if you would start. Um, uh, I'm wearing uh, a suit that started um, as all white um, sort of linen, which is sort of unusual in the winter time, but um, I've splattered it with color, um, reds and greens and um, purples, um, hmm. just wow. all sorts of vibrant. Icon. Cool. Colors, yeah. Um, so amongst this, I knew this was sort of going to be a sleek sort of crowd, but I think I wanted to make a little bit of a scene. So I, um, mm. so I, I, I'm coming as a walking painting myself. Your white painted hair, um, resplendent atop your head, wearing this outfit. Um, heads are turning as you walk in, arm in arm. Jack, uh, what is Faye wearing tonight? Um. I believe Faye has a, a black sort of band around her head with a, a little feather fascinator. Um, a little more subdued than usual, no colors, all black makeup as well and the eyeliner, just a little blush. Um, she's wearing a Scaparelli dress. Oh. Um, oh, she's wearing the lobster dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. She's wearing a Scaparelli dress. Scaparelli uh, was around, but not super big yet. So I'm wow. ahead of the curve. Oh, wow. maybe. Um, well, Coco. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Coco Chanel. And um, it's like a black lacy dress, little straps, short, of course, always wearing heels, as one does. Um, yeah, looking very flapper, wearing my signature pearls. Um, and by all accounts, Looking absolutely cutesy, <laughs> but a little more dramatic and, and mature absolutely than usual. Cutesy. As you both find your seats uh, coming into this crowd of well-to-dos, um, the gentry of London, um, uh, a sort of esteemed group of trustees and guests uh, arriving here. As uh, <clears throat> Bert, what are you wearing as you enter into the Upper East Gallery? <clears throat> yeah, Bert is wearing like... He, he panicked earlier in the day, realizing this event was dressier than he thought it would be. <laughs> kind of rushed to a department store and got a, 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 a pretty plain, just black suit. Uh -huh. um, that is uh, like a, a size too big, but it's like a little short in the arms still. He's like got fairly lanky. Uh -huh. um, and a, 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 a blue tie with a black, and he's like, it's not Ooh. working. Oh, All together. Fedora. <laughs> Fedora. But he's tried to comb his hair down, but couldn't quite get it together. And he still, unfortunately, like has his like leather messenger bag with him because he's been oh, running around the city. Oh. He's trying to check it with someone. Yeah, looking around uh, quickly. Uh, uh, um, a guard here uh, in uh, fine um, evening wear. Um, white bow tie and long tails uh, comes up to you and says, I will take care of that. Oh, um, you. Do you need... Uh, it, it's just... Will I be able to... Uh, where, where should As, I get it? As uh, he picks it up, he says, I remember what you look like. As he turns around. Girl, and parts. Shaded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miss Burt, you enter. Vera, 
I don't want to be this person, but I would be last to enter. (laughs) Waiting in the carriage outside in the warmth, uh, uh, watching as the others go in, uh, you see uh, uh, ahead of you uh, a young woman arriving. June, if you'd like to describe. Yes. June is wearing a blue women's suit, which would have a skirt, ultimately, Mm -hmm. but... um, you, the fabric is, you get the sense, like, it's a year-round suit by design, yeah, you sure. know? Uh-huh. She's got the uh-huh. one suit. Yeah. yeah. And it's a dark blue. The suits have, like, the kind of padded shoulders. It comes with the little bow tie, but it's tied a little, or, you know, not bow tie, but, um, you know, the women's, like, ascot. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of, you I know? know. But, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a little askew. The shirt's not buttoned up all the way. She's still wearing, like, probably the shoes she wore to work. She's trying. She's trying to meet the standard, but uh-huh, uh-huh. she doesn't quite have all the pieces. Her Certainly. Hair is still in the, the look. Only the most keen eyes are mm-hmm. clocking the mud on the shoes. Um, the various bits of evidence of where you've been today, as the rest of you seems um, to be... Um, very of the moment, uh, 1924, although um, looking out on this crowd, you imagine that of the moment is not something that these folks always take kindly to. Mm. As you walk in. Do we notice Vera? I mean, um, do we notice June? June. Come in. As the two of you have found your seats with little placards there, um, two figures have come to join you, um, sitting where you are. The first is this man. Bert coming to sit, and shortly thereafter, June has come and sat at the table. June, it's lovely to see you. God, it's so good to see you again. Oh my goodness. You came. We had to. Of course, we're always in the mood for Oh, it's for good the... to see you again yes. as well, yes. Uh, we only spoke very briefly, but... Um, right, but... It's, uh, oh, it's good to see you. I'm this glad is my... you protected her. This is Clayton. <laughs> what was that? Well, we're many things to each other, really. Yeah. But, uh, lover, this is like Clayton. Lover, partner, um, experimenter. Yes. Uh, <gasps> Excuse my French. And, and, and at some points, my muse, really. Oh, uh, nice. and, I, and I take out a, a pad with a bunch of drawings. They're all nude oh. of, of her. Um, oh. I'm, so you, I'm like trying not to look right at them. <laughs> no, no, look. It's really. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they lovely? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm looking. I'm looking. They're, they're beautiful. They're really, really special work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and hello. You. <laughs> oh. You don't look like James. Oh. Oh yes. What? Um, James, my. My brother. So. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, I'm, ass- I'm assuming you all were together on the uh, the um, uh, the the, uh, yeah. well, the yes. Well, yes. they were really. I I I, oh. I popped in at the end. How well, how was he? Oh, he had some business to attend to uh, back in Massachusetts. So oh. I figured I would um, go in his stead. Uh, I have what sort of business? If you, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, I, you know, you know what? Is he all Don't right? Oh, he's having a, he's having a, a, a bit of a, a tough time in, in, in I, I, please him. I, I, I ask for your discretion, of course, but uh, you all went through a similar, a similar experience, so. Of course. Right, he's um, he's resting up at my home in Massachusetts and getting himself together. As it were, I, I not to totally overgeneralize, but he doesn't really strike me as the kind of guy who ever has a tough time. You know what I mean? He was just kind of right, right. Yes, things are very um, <clears throat> on the surface, quite smooth for James, of course. But you know, we have had experiences in our shared past that they come back to haunt us every now and then. Please do forgive my oversharing. I I tend to just say what 
is happening, which I'm working on holding back. No, no, okay, I, but... as you all hear a boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> as a guard, I, I sort of like take. I like ready myself with like a knife or something. Mm. As the sound echoes through the room, um, a guard at the front entrance. <clears throat> The Lady Vera Margareta <laughs> Fistmuch Wankington, Duchess of Corksworth. As you walk in, Jordan, uh, how are you dressed for this evening? So, uh, my undergarments, which is a oh my long... God. Yeah, let's go inside out. <laughs> Absolutely, inside out. It's, they're all important to the overall of look, course. I'll be honest. Of course. The, the bottom layer is a white silk dress that is adorned with white peacock feathers that go all the way up to the neck, that like parade around Holy her fuck. visage. <laughs> Over it is a turquoise taffeta dress, very fitted to the bodice, but poofy at the end, um, with large uh, swoops of fabric that lay on her hands and her arms. Um, there is a white peacock Fascinator in a high. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not joking. No, I know. I thought the full peacock. Yeah. <laughs> no, but their head. Oh, the head of the peacock. Yeah. Oh my the god. The head of the peacock with a few feathers, <laughs> and a large updo, and then um, to top it all off, a uh, of course her Arctic fox uh, mink oh stole, god, and a uh, she she's this time because it, it is she's it's a dinner cane. Yeah. She needs a dinner cane. Mm -hmm. So she's carrying a white peacock dinner cane. That's enough. As you walk in <laughs> splendent, resplendent into this room, you are not short of uh, various uh, gentry members who uh, hop to their feet coming up to you and, uh, my lady, my lady, oh, it's wonderful to see you, my lady. As you are walking into the room, uh, as you uh, brush them aside, uh, a variety of them coming up oh. and um, uh, whispering oh to each God. other, and then say, it's, it's wonderful to see you this evening, as, as uh, yes. uh, you are offered a, a whole host of respect as you walk to your place in the room, your placard sent next to these four, as uh, a butler comes and uh, brings the chair out for you, for you to sit. A Stanley, could you just... The table looks a bit sticky. Of course, madam. As uh, he um, pulls out, uh, seemingly from a, a pocket that was hidden on his uh, jacket, um, uh, a cushion which quickly <laughs> inflates and he places it on the chair as he brings out uh, a rag and <laughs> wipes down the setting in front of you. Do, do you, uh, Stanley, did you bring the Chablis? The Chablis, of course. Oh my God. Of course. Oh, as, uh, he uh, hands you discreetly a, a, a small bottle. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not going to pour it myself, Stanley. Oh, of course, of course, as he pops and uh, pours <laughs> into uh, your own personal glassware that he sets on the table. I will be in the corner uh, whenever you need. Thank you, Stanley. So he Actually, bows. Yes. Stanley. Yes. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm giving you the night off. Are you... Certain, madam. Yes. Go to whatever seethy, loathsome, <laughs> drugged out bar that you want to go to. You little. Whoa. As he gives a little oh smile and says, Only the lowest, madam. As he gives a nod and walks out. Get absolutely pissed at me. Such chemistry. Yeah. As he walks, turning on his heel um, and um, just casually, discreetly exits the room. Um, Five of you are seated. My now. I think we stare at right all like. <clears throat> hey, hello. Um, hello. Um, I feel a bit underdressed. <sighs> yes. <laughs> so another family member, I see. Oh, uh, we know your son. You know my son. Oh. Um, yeah. I assume so, since I, I, he did receive a letter for this event. How's he doing? Fine. Just a slight cold. Now. My name is Robert Flynn. I'm Bert. It's 
Nice to meet you. Plain Lane. It's a pleasure. I'm Faye Shethman, but you could call me Faye. Faye. It's such a lovely name. Thank you. June Cleman. Like the month. Exactly. Well. <laughs> and you? They, they said it at the doors. <laughs> Mr. Stop. Sorry, I ah, missed, it. missed it. We were having a, a talk. Yes, um, uh, you can call me Lady Vera. Lady, Lady Vera. Vera. I like your... Lady Vera. Right, that's what I said. No, you just said Vera. Oh, pardon me. No, it's all right. It's just, um, I, I don't expect an American to understand. Small glasses are set in front of each of you as sherry is being poured, a little aperitif. Um, as you can see that uh, beyond uh, doors, uh, food is being prepared as uh, small bites begin to come out. Um, a banquet uh, in session um, as the five of you have your sherry. Um, the various people are uh, milling about, uh, kind of coming over behind each other's chairs, speaking to each other, saying hellos, uh, having little laughs with each other. Um, and uh, before long, uh, a supper is served, including sweetbreads, venison, and wine by the bottle set on the table. Um, as you take in the ambiance? Yeah. Just looking at the food. Certainly. Well, it's certainly amazing to not be in America anymore, isn't it? <clears throat> is this a... for me? No. And you, you see that, that, that Bert hasn't put any sort of meat on his plate and is kind of looking around no. for any sort of vegetables. Oh my god, he's a vegetarian. Doesn't in the 20s? Yeah. <laughs> it's Eric! <laughs> it's Eric! <laughs> uh, Did you do this on purpose? Oh my god. No. <laughs> um, yeah, before... I just uh, think he would be a vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah he would, he would. Right. Um, a, a salad uh, sort of side is brought out of like uh, sort of an acorn squash with some dry grains in it um, as it's set to the side. They're kind of chewing it dryly. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I thought the chicken was lovely. Yes, me too. But the wine better. <laughs> Very good. Cheers. 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 We don't get this in America. Well, not cheers. Above the table, right. literally. Oh, right. Uh, yes, and I'm proud of this. Yeah. Cheers. So your glasses, ding, 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 against each other. Um, that sound is um, mixed with the sound of someone tapping their spoon against the glass. Ding, 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 ding. As at the head of the room, you see an elderly man in military finery. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, step up to the lectern and speak. Christ on a stick. As he comes up, comes up to the lectern. We here at the Challenger Trust make it our mission. <clears throat> I to, knew you weren't gonna like that. Yeah, you wouldn't. Let me get in there. What the fuck you, is going here on this oh, day? Shit. Eric Shade. Rarely Eric happens. Shade. Really happy. <laughs> <laughs> we here at the Challenger Trust make it our mission to select speakers of a clear voice, sound mind, and impeccable credentials to report on original researches or inventions. Is this of Stanley? Theoretical, oh, no, this is an old man. Oh, this is an old man in military finery. Um, I'd say he's about the same age as Lady Vera. Just mm -hmm. Yeah, around it's like early 50s. She's it's in her mid-50s. Like um, it's like a Princess Diaries. Is it like a Princess Diaries? You know how she has that guy? I feel like there's Joe. no sexual attraction there's between them, okay. though. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they respect each other. Copy that. So but above all else, we judge our nominees by... Barnum's Criterion, amaze us. I have no doubt that our speaker for this evening will excel in all respects. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mehmet Makriot. Yes. Applause, give way. Woo! You see, the man who is familiar to most of you some of you more familiar than others, uh, having traveled with some of you on uh, a cruise uh, and 
for you having gone on an unexpected expedition, and for others, uh, I mean, that you have only heard of your family relations through descriptions of the events tonight. As um, Makriya takes the lectern, um, he first has. <coughs> <coughs> A bit of a coughing fit. Mm. As he, uh, the Spanish with the RSV on the crew collects himself. <laughs> um, just a slight drop of sweat coming down his brow. Um, as he uh, takes a lectern, he looks to your part of the table, and. Uh, he gives a nod and a smile to each of you. Dr. Mehmet Makriyat, this man in his early to mid thirties, um, uh, a man of Turkish origin, he has uh, sort of uh, swept back uh, medium hair, um, swept out of his eyes, a few strands on his forehead. Um, almost a, a five o'clock shadow, but with uh, a thick mustache. Um, with um, deep brown eyes looking at each of you gives a smile and a nod uh, he looks to you Lady Vera and he gives a slight bow he looks to you and gives a little smile and a nod <laughs> so he collects himself my lady thank you Colonel As many of you well know, my business is often boiled down to skepticism, methodical analysis in the work of debunking mediums, uh, spiritualists, fortune tellers, prophets, holy sites, apparitions, and so on. My lecture tonight, however, concerns, it concerns those instances where skepticism fails. There prove to be categories of repetitious phenomenon uh, offering no simple elucidation. I refer to the poltergeist, to the traveler who suddenly finds themselves dozens or thousands of miles or years from where they stood moments before, and to the haunting. The essential characteristics of these hauntings are simple. A person or thing must have existed, must have disappeared in some sense and then must reappear once or many times. That which reappears may be partial or insubstantial or be as solid and real seeming as any member of tonight's illustrious gathering. I offer you tonight three examples. So at this point, a screen is pulled down behind uh, Makriat's lectern and uh, a small, um, very basic projector is brought out, a light projector. This mockery app projects three slides of three hauntings in detail. One, um, a French fishing boat. Second, a Norwegian woman. Third, a London handsome cab. She describes for you that each incident was studied and photographed simultaneously from at least three positions, and each example shows the subject slowly emerging whole from invisible planes, what I like to call the curtain of perception. You see that each subject is semi-transparent with objects seeming to move or be seen through them uh, in space. Each subject noticeably glows and each subject seems to move in incredibly slow motion. As he's describing these for you and showing them Sorry, from the different perspectives. Um, curtain of perception. The curtain of perception. perception. And what was the third one? A London taxi cab? A London handsome cab. That would be like a small, uh, sort of short horse-drawn carriage. Oh, okay. A Norwegian woman and a French fishing boat. Mm -hmm. So when he's talking about these, the boat itself is appearing, not like a person on the boat. What you're looking at as you're looking at these slides kind of go um, in uh, a projection of uh, very early sort of film. Um, 
you can see that um, in the case of like the French fishing boat, waves are passing at normal speed and you see this boat moving slowly, fully into existence. And you can see ripples of wind across its sails moving slowly, slower than the waves. And in fact, for the purposes of the show, he speeds up the projection so that the fishing boat is going at normal speed, but you see that the waves are moving at an incredibly fast, fast pace. Mm. As you are watching this, uh, even as uh, mm. there are members of the audience that scoff at this, um, all of the gathered audience are held in rapt attention. Smokriat continues. The substance of each apparition is intangible. Comparatively, instances of touchable, solid apparitions rarely occur. One might wait many lifetimes for a chance to experience it. In the past 30 years, science has begun to learn about that which cannot be seen or normally sensed. And that some behavior on the atomic level is impossible in the greater world. It's my belief that such hauntings represent clues concerning a natural universe much larger and much stranger than we imagine. The walls of what we perceive as normality have a subtle flexibility. We may not yet imagine what possibilities there are for apparition or for transformation, as he looks at all of you. Maybe one day we will be able to move up and down time or to travel globally with minor effort or to perceive that which at present lies completely beyond our senses. We know this dog. <laughs> this dog's going to be barking. Wait, Wait, who's talking? It's, a it's just a neighbor. It's, a ghost it's across the streets <laughs> in Hyde Park. Yeah. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. woof. <laughs> what waits beyond remains the supreme question which, for the present, each must answer for themselves. Thank you very much. Just a slight pause. And then applause cascades through the room as Makriya steps down and the gathered audience begins to discuss amongst themselves enthusiastically. Quickly, your plates are taken away and the tables are replaced as the cocktail reception begins. High tables are set up now where you are able to gather. Um, trays are brought out by butlers um, with Highball glasses containing gimlets. Hmm. As the cocktail reception begins, you find yourselves, the five of you, around a high table. The gimlets passed out. As you look across the room, you can see that Makriya is across the room, um, surrounded by trustees who are peppering him with questions. He seems to be indisposed at the moment. As the five of you find yourselves together. <clears throat> What do you all make of that? Yeah, well, you know, certainly lots of um, uh, poltergeist things of this sort around, you know, the area, Massachusetts, where I'm from, where I don't know, but you all from as well. Arkham. Yes. Oh. Well, I, I am not, I'm originally, of course, from a little town outside uh, London, but. I, uh, I, I live in Arkham, yes. I see. I went to Miskatonic. Oh, well, very well. I, I did my studies uh, uh, here in London. But um, yeah, yeah, Miskatonic, of course, is a very esteemed university. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> um, well, I, I agree. Lots of um, poltergeists around. But uh, why would he call us to this? I think he wants uh, us to do something about it. It does seem an awfully long way to uh, travel for a lecture, although it was an interesting lecture, but the slides were nice. Yes. 
as you're all discussing, um, a thin man, um, a little over six feet tall, with close-cropped uh, black curly hair, um, sort of a, a sallow face, um, but uh, with a kind expression, and his eyes comes over to you, uh, the five of you. He says, uh, you are um, uh, Mehmet's uh, guests, uh, is that correct? Yes. 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 Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is, is John, John Bedos. So he comes around and shakes each of your hands. Uh, he takes yours and bows you to you. Bellows? Bedos. B-E-D-D-O-W-S. John Bedos. Um, as I uh, comes over, I'm, I'm a, a research assistant for Mehmet. Um, we met at uh, university, but um, we continue to study and to work together uh, very closely. Um, I've heard about uh, uh, all of you, or at least a family of some of you, um, but uh, quite a, <laughs> a speech. He's is, is is always got something on his mind, <laughs> isn't he? Yes. Uh, I, if I may ask, uh, what, what's uh, occurred with uh, your, your family? Uh, if, I, if, you, if you don't mind. Oh, no, uh, uh, James, uh, James is uh, uh, just on business and couldn't make the trip, so uh, sure. we have um, experience in similar... Um, well, I thought I might be a bit, uh, uh, you know, interested in the same sort of things that, that um, uh, the professor is speaking of, so I thought I would come in, in his stead. Can we check that? Like, yeah, experience how do we, how do, we do that? You can make a psychology check, um, <laughs> and... If you're trying to fight against that, I would say probably persuade check for you. Okay. Wait, say psychology. Psychology check, just to check on. Yeah. Her story. I, oh my god. But I sort of assume I anyway. Succeeded again. Oh. Girl, girl. Well, unlikely. Oof. That's a failure. You succeeded. I failed. Fail. You succeeded. I succeeded. What does uh, Faye gather from you? Uh, just reading into kind of kind of story you're telling, whether it's truthful or not. I think you get the sense that like James being away on business isn't entirely the whole truth, as I kind of said at the table. Um, but that yeah, I seem very interested and earnest about you know my interests and in things of a darker nature. Let me just did tell me about uh, about what happened out in Massachusetts and uh, he assures me that he would not be alive were it not for the, the likes of you all and that he owes you a great deal and so uh, I suppose I have you to thank for that and uh, to your family as well and I think it probably means a lot to him that you have uh, attended here today even if the family was unable to yes. understand. Yes, yes. My dear son, uh, Warnaby, is, uh, has fell ill, so I've been uh, handling his affairs here in London. It's a little hard to believe everything that's happened to you all, I suppose. So I wanted to see it for myself. Yes, well, I can understand that. Yes. It might be prudent to warn you once you see it you never unsee it trust I'm sure you. your son can attest trust me from a, a, a mother's intuition I have sat with my son for a very long time and studied his eyes I can tell the pain he's been in I know it's real it's still hard to believe Yes, there, there are many um, instances, of course, uh, of um, also, uh, to add to that, um, I guess sort of, uh, as the professor was saying before, uh, you know, people who create stories just for the heck of it, I suppose, um, that aren't true, so it, it lends a sort of dis disbelief to these uh, well, real occurrences, which are, which are, are very real and, and very... Heroin. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can't, I, of course, was not here at this particular instance, but yes. Nor I, but... When will the doctor be ready for us? Oh, 
Well, I'm sure that it won't be too long. She no, it's going to happen right now. He looks across the table. So you call <laughs> over. Um, looking over there, um, as you look over, you can see that uh, Mehmet is amidst these trustees, but uh, the crowd sort of parts as one particular man, um, a bit on the shorter side, an older man, um, slightly uh, heavier set with... Uh, well-kept beard, uh, pointed at the end, and a uh, mustache. Um, short hair slicked back out, seemingly in his probably 60s or so. Um, in a very well-to-do uh, coat and tails, um, sort of parts the group and sticks out his hands to Makriya as Makriya locks eyes with him and shakes it. And, gives a big smile to him as uh, this man sort of clasps his hand around his, gives a nod, and he pulls Makriya in. And you see him whisper something to Makriya, just into his ear. And he pulls back. Um, all of you, as you're getting attention, there's you make spot hidden check for me. Mm. Would I? Question, you can also would make I, a spot hidden check for me. If you would want. I know this person though? Um, that's Ooh, a great question. A one. Um, wow. I'd say probably that's a history check. Um, it could also be a credit Second. rating check. If I you got wish. a hard success. That, that's I'll probably better a, for you. I'll do a credit rating check. We use credit rating for this just in terms of like knowing the Three rich success. people around town. It's a, it's it's a roll one. It's critical. It's a success. Yeah. Success. Critical. Great. What's that? I rolled a one. That's, critical success. That's a success. Yeah, an extreme success. Amazing. Not just extreme. It says extreme is all the way until one, and then it says critical one. Critical, okay. Work. On your spot hidden, on the back. amazing. I don't know if you guys have that on the back of your I sheet. got a seven, so it was, it was extreme as well. Incredible. I got a hard success. I failed. Failed. Um, <laughs> you are, your attention brought over to Lady Vera as she's uh, gesturing for Makriya to come over. Um, as uh, you, with your hard success, um, you notice Beddoes kind of quiet down and staring over at uh, this interaction happening. Um, Beddoes' eyes are locked, unblinking with the interaction that's happening, the handshake, the drawing, the whisper. You notice Beddoes. The two of you see Beddoes noticing, and additionally, you see this unease a little bit of Makriya. Um, this sort of taken off guardness, this uh, surprise uh, mixed with not, uh, not disingenuous respect. Um, there is this respect Makriya is showing to this man. Um, and with you, with your critical success, I say that what you pick up, the flicker in the eyes of Makriya, is just a hint of fear. And then mm. it's gone. And they're shaking hands, and Makriya is giving a, a big smile to this man. It gives a nod. And the man <clears throat> turns and starts a conversation with some other gentry. Uh, who uh, go off into a small sort of secluded conversation of their own and they start laughing to themselves as Makriat looks over at you and <sighs> gives a full bow and walks over to you. Did I know that guy? With your success on your credit rating, um, you would recognize a professor, uh, a London professor um, who... Uh, is not in town very often, travels a lot. Uh, this is Professor Julius Smith. Okay. Um, British, uh, older gentleman, um, sort of known to be eccentric. Um, he's a, a notable anthropologist, uh, in addition to uh, keeping uh, a sort of bespoke antique store of sorts. Uh, mm that he uh, keeps his collection of things that were, he collects on his world travels, which are many and far flung. Um, 
This is a man that is not seen around these parts very often. Um, he's a man that is uh, not often given a class even to teach. Uh, he's known more as a researcher and a writer. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, as you see him falling in very comfortably with the rest of the gentry who are uh, whispering to him and laughing. Um, as Makriyad catches your eye, bows to you, says, my lady Vera. Yes, Merhaba, doctor. I've been uh, reading uh, a lot about uh, the inception of your country. Is that right? Yes, well, uh, a year it's been, hasn't it? Yes, indeed. It's, it's a tumultuous hmm. time, but yes. uh, you'll have to teach me something, because I'm sure that you know a bit more than I have. It's been a long time since I have uh, left my country. Well, it's now a different country, as the Ottoman Empire has fallen. You're correct yes. about that. Well, I, I, I am honored that you uh, would join us here, and uh, in addition to being uh, uh, heartsick that uh, your son could not make it, though my best mm. wishes go to him and his recovery. Thank you. Uh, I have to be honest, I was just a bit curious about the whole situation, wasn't I? Uh, about which situation? My son has told me tales of his time in the States. And though I want to believe him, and I want to believe my son, I'm having a difficult time keeping the story straight, understanding the, the gravity of what happened. It sounds like a made-up story told by a lunatic. But I know my son not to be a lunatic. I know him to be wise for his age. Smart. Sturdy. So, I wanted to my lady, see you for myself. If there is yes. anything that I can offer you, any sort of benefit that I can offer you at this time, it would be that uh, whatever your son is recounting to you, I assure you, it is not the ravings of a lunatic. I do believe that uh, recovery will come for him, and I would urge you not to doubt him. Tishakila, uh, Professor. Appreciate you. Puts his hand over his heart, and the rest of you, my friends, thank you for being here. I recognize a Flynn when I see one. Oh, people rarely conflate us, so, oh, you know, that's the wrong. It's in the eyes. Words, but yes. Well, it's my honor to have you here. I, I, I appreciate you coming to this silly little talk. No, uh, the travel's been okay for all of you. Your talk I, was wonderful. It was very fascinating. Oh, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's a little something to entertain the folks here. And, uh, you know, I collect all sorts of strange stories in my travels, uh, mostly uh, fantasies, but sometimes something of interest. You know, they all have great, great interest. Well, uh, all your travels here were not too much trouble, I, I hope. <laughs> well, no, I, it was lovely. Yeah. And I sort of lean in and I and I give him like a kiss on the cheek, but it's right at the <laughs> right at the side of the mouth. Um, and I go, um, hello, mammy, darling. Ah, mammy. A, a spot hidden mammy. check for me. Spot hidden check. On the Wait, can, together. Well, can I make? A, can we all make a gaydar check? I mean, it's like a, it's like it's very like yeah. obvious. But yeah. You may if you wish. Yeah, success. Yeah, it's success. Yeah, that's oh, success. hard success. It's a success. Right. Well, you know. I know who he is. Yeah, you know exactly about me. <laughs> uh, but me and my I don't know about me. <laughs> but how's he feeling today? Yeah. Um, he gives you a very confident smile back. Oh, my God. Pleasure is mine, Clayton. Mm. Do you like my suit? Uh, looks... Uh, Exceptional on you. I'd expect nothing less from the artist himself. Yes. Uh, now, I have two questions for you. Sorry, you know I jumped right in. Speaking of illness, are, are you sick? Am I? Mm. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I, I've seem to have... Don't lie to me. Gotta make a psychology check. Can we overhear this? Yeah. 
don't. Yeah, I'm not trying to hide that. that. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Need something. So close. Give me Should I use seven luck? That's a lot. That's a lot. See if anyone else exists. Oh, no, I? I'll take him out of the court. What about a survival? Would that work? We'll go with the original roll, I think. I you cough, this. though. The air in the January air in London is a bit, a bit dry when you've been traveling around a lot. I've just gotten back from Italy, and I, I think that uh, that atmosphere suited me a bit better. It's a bit of a hard turn here. Where but were you? Uh, Italy. I'll be fine. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, but just curious. I was uh, having a, a bit of uh, time off, as uh, as uh, Clayton and Faye may know that uh, it was necessary. It was in Milan and uh, oh. seeing the sights and such. But um, as he's looking around, his eyes kind of dart over his shoulder, looking around the gentry around. Um, you can see just a small trickle of sweat going down his brow as he's uh, looking around different people. And uh, we'll go to a crossroads. Going to a crossroads. Crossroads. I love you. Crossroads. You guys, I just Crossroads. have crazy deja vu. Really? You deja vu fairly often. I do. That's cool. You do, yeah. Maybe I just That's am crazy. Crossroads is Maybe. who approaches them? Someone drunk or someone important? Someone drunk. Oh. Mm. It feels so fun to play in this room, you guys. I know. I know. It's, so it's really right. I felt way more like in the game. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. without all the like lights yeah. and the chords and being like, and the backdrop. The back. I think my parents didn't know that we were in your bedroom the whole time last year. Oh my god. They thought we were in a wooden. They thought we were in. (laughs) 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 We were in Saratoga Forest. (laughs) Saratoga. All right, it's all tied up. Three to three. That was a funny one. When it fell. When it fell. (laughs) Actually, no. Oh, four to four. Four to four. When it's tied, vote. the vote goes Once to the point. players. I'm trying to get so, my back my audio. I love it. Jack, drink water. Deja vu can mean you're dehydrated. Is that true? Oh, is that true? Wow. Um, that's oh, so definitely dehydrated. Important. With one, with that's it. That's yes. it. Final vote. Wow. The killer's got some knowledge. Uh-huh. They've got knowledge about a lot I of things. Unfortunately, our studio yes. still isn't big enough to where I can easily exit the room, so I'll, I'll wait. I'll get you some water. I need water, really? too, so I can go for it. It would be maybe good, yeah. like, in the future, we could bring in your glass bottles and just, like, oh, have yeah. them under so the table. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah. Just figuring out hydration. And What's our hydration system? What's our hydration yeah. plan? Uh-huh. Um, we got a water we, cooler. We all have. I can build. We all have yeah pipes from the ceiling. Yeah. We all have camelbacks. <laughs> our, <laughs> hamster, yeah. our hamster. Above us is a gigantic <laughs> pouch of water just <laughs> waiting to fall onto the ta- the TV Anybody table. Anyone know what color paint this is? Throw your guesses in the chat. Yeah, so uh, it's not it's yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Throw. Oh yeah, it's a really fun name. So it's a fun name. Put out your wildest guesses. Something that Faye yeah, would wild. say probably. Yeah. Something you would so, say for watch sure. Out. Yeah. Watch True. out, Faye. About Faye. Faye. Thank you so much. You used to call You guys me both that. took mm-hmm. jobs with your seats. It yeah. Turns out. Oh fun. yeah. Bellows girl. Bellows a butler. <laughs> <laughs> um, the vote was someone mm. important by one vote. Yeah, could you have a digestive? I have had two. Thank you so much. I've had two. two. I've 20. had like two. Yeah. Forty. Two packs. <laughs> I've had two even. <laughs> um, well, well. As um, someone important was the vote, and as Macria is looking over his shoulder, uh, uh, a voice pipes up, um, approaching from behind, um, saying, Malaysia Vera, oh, it's uh, an absolute honor to uh, have you in our midst as uh, Makriat moves to his side. <laughs> and um, here, here. the um, piercing blue eyes of Dr. Julius Smith uh, approach as uh, he comes up, takes your hand, and gives a bow. It is. Uh, Quite a privilege to have you here at uh, our He's little function. He's giving big spooky vibe. Listen to this music. I appreciate you uh, having us. It was quite an interesting lecture. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, he is quite the scholar, isn't he? As he clasps his hand on the Macriot's shoulder, and 
says he has much to teach us all, I think. I think we would all do well to listen to him. Can I psychology him? Is he giving me word like what are the vibes? Go ahead, make psychology. I don't yeah, I'm like giving it. If the music's or so occult, mean. I'm kinda wanna say he's creepy. So if you don't have a specific thing that you're looking for occultish in okay. him, then that might be tough, but um ah. Yeah, I fail. He's fail psychology. Mm-hmm. Well, Alright, are we Wait, all psychology? You know I lose her. Take your time. This is the guy nothing, that I nothing. critical success to know that Mehmet Makriana is scared of him. He whispered in Mehmet's ear earlier. Oh, uh, My name is uh, Smith, Dr. Julius Smith. Uh, I was uh, <laughs> this one's teacher once upon a time, um, but now I, I think that I think that it is he who is the teacher. Uh, he's done so much traveling, and we really are so proud of him. As I understand it, you're all his guests at this esteemed event. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, friends from uh, London and otherwise. Is that right, Mehmet? Uh, as Mehmet says, yes. As, uh, uh, Dr. Smith looks at all of you and says, and uh, how was it that you all came to uh, um, be of a sort of friendship with each other? Well, uh, we met Mehmet on a cruise, actually. That's right. That's right. Beautiful scenic uh, journey through the um, ocean. Lovely to hear that he's getting some rest. He deserves it. Well, we met him before. (laughs) Before the cruise. Now, is that right, Mem? Where was that? You know, I I travel very often, so it's meeting people all over. It's 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 difficult to tell. Yes, I quite forget as well. But, um, you know, in Massachusetts, uh, about. <laughs> oh, you meet all sorts of people in Massachusetts, <laughs> right? Spent some time in Boston myself. Uh, uh, you know, if you think that London gets cold, you'd be surprised if you travel out to Beantown. <laughs> but, um, well, it's. it's uh, uh, the privilege <laughs> is, uh, I'm sure, all yours to be in the esteemed company of uh, Mehmet's friends. Not every day that you meet um, a true scholar, kind of pats him on the back, and real genius in his field, I think. And what is your field, uh, Doctor? My field just happens to be the very same, uh, anthropology. Uh, oh. Just, uh, passing through the old uh, stomp grounds uh, briefly in some travels and... Uh, Really? You know, I tend to go out and uh, discover about cultures uh, in various nations, various uh, civilizations. I try my hand at writing a monograph or two. <laughs> but and what are you working on right now? Right now, I'm, I'm trying to think about uh, these cave paintings in France. Uh, some of the oldest uh, founds, uh, uh, Stone Age. You'd be fascinated to see what sort of writings uh, can be found. Uh, the images that are made uh, by people that, you know, I would think <laughs> barely had a thought in them. But um, is that in Lascaux? Lascaux. Um, I yes, I suppose it, it might be. <laughs> are you travelled about the uh, anthropology? Uh, do your own sort of escapades? I just read in a paper that they found some cave drawings there well, it's fascinating to know that a real person's actually studying them well, not just a reporter getting it from who knows where the smile kind of widens and says I'll have to have you on one of my next trips <laughs> well it would be a, a pleasure I'm Faye Faye so he reaches out his hands and he kisses Julius. And I'll take his and flip it. And kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. Enchanté. It's sort of Britney Spears. <laughs> I really <laughs> see yeah, like yeah, old nineteen yeah, twenties yeah. Britney Spears. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> how, do, how do you do it? I don't know. As he uh, his I eyes sort of linger that. on Faye. <laughs> and he Trisha, what's I'm sorry 
I have to borrow uh, Dr. Mockery out just for a little bit. Um, I'm afraid I must confer with him on some professional matters. As uh, he looks over at uh, Dr. Mockery uh, and nods to him, Dr. Mockery looks in and nods. And says, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will join you uh, shortly. Oh, but we were just getting acquainted. Uh, five more minutes? Uh, Two, even. Go ahead and make a persuade check. Something's a foot. Who did uh, uh, Something's a foot. A, a, a good success. Good success. Hard. Um, Hard success. As Machiel looks over at you, and Julius looks between the two of you. He looks at you and says, All right. Well, I will be back to you collect the most popular man in the room as he rubs the back of my career, uh, just in a, a few minutes. Um, I don't like touching. But, uh, no. I'll go uh, do a bit more mingling. Dr. Smith, uh, if I'd like to take you up on that, how should I contact you? If you uh, wish to contact me, uh, you'll find me in uh, Islington. If you... Uh, Ask for the records here at the Institute. They have my address. Thank you. As soon as he walks away, I'm going to be looking like I'm hugging an old friend, smiling, and uh, going, ow! Oh! Turns and walks off, uh, laughing oh, again in conversation with others as Makriya turns to you. Beto is still just staring off at Smith as he walks away. Oh, Mehmet, you're afraid of him, aren't you? Why? He kind of pulls mean? away from you. That's... <laughs> nothing that he can do to me now. <laughs> so... But he has some, some, something to you in the past. Nothing very serious. He, um, he was my mentor once upon a time. He was uh, a friend, still is a friend, but um, he was my professor in school. I, um, among the many term papers that I wrote, some of my research and some of my conclusions may have appeared in some of his published writing. Um, oh. Now, this is something that I would only say to trusted friends, but uh, it is not something that uh, will reflect well on me if anyone were to go out and start accusing him of sort of thing. He hasn't done <laughs> anything more serious than that. So it, I try to let bygones be bygones, and um, though there may be a bit of hurt there still that you are very astutely picking up, he is still a friend. Okay. Make sure you continue to ask yourself that. If he is. Doctor. I feel like uh, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you call us all here? That's a good question. I can't. That is I, yeah, I wasn't wondering myself. The most important yeah. question, I suppose. Me too. He looks again over his shoulder and sees the various tuxedoed and gowned folks in the room looking over, and he looks uh, back towards all of you. Well, this reception was as good as any to gather all of you in the city, and I am extraordinarily happy that all of you are here, including yourselves, Bert, Lady Vera. I need trusted people to be here. However, I do not think that this is the time and place to uh, elaborate on exactly what it is. There are many listening ears here, as you may have noticed. And so with that, I would ask you to call on me tomorrow at my house. And he pulls out a card and gives a card to each of you uh, with an address in St. John's Wood in London. Um, house address. It says, come around tea time. Around three hours past noon and we will be able to speak more freely then. I apologize that it is not tonight, but I'm happy you're all here. St. 
John's Wood. Where's that? Huh? St. John's Wood. Um, St. John's Wood, I believe, is in the north of London. Um, We're around Hyde Park right now. St. John's Wood is just west of Regent's Park, north of Hyde Park. As it's around where Abbey Road is, if you've ever been Mm. there. Um, Ow! As uh, he looks to all of you and says, I again apologize, but uh, my ploy worked. (laughs) You're all here. And so I look forward to being able to speak more freely with you. I will be indisposed for the evening, but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, for inviting us. For inviting us, it's already been it's already been an adventure. This voices call from across the room. Mavet, Mavet. As uh, they call for him to come over to conversation, he looks to you. All right. See you tomorrow. Gives a nod. Yeah. Gives a bow to Lady Vera in turns. As the five of you are left with Beddoes still standing next to you. Beddoes sort of staring off blankly. I, and how long have you been been working for um, uh, the, the, the doctor? The professor? The doc, it, is it? It's a doctor, Pro- sweetheart. Yes. I believe he was a professor. No. But he, he's, he's oh, still a, he's still a doctor. doctor. Mm-hmm. He's got all the, the titles. Yes. I've been working with him for uh, a decade or so. Oh. Yes. Now you he found it. He found it nice. Lovely. No, he is. He's a genius. But he's kind. It's a rare combination. Precisely. Beddoes, might I call you John? Of course. <laughs> um, you know, he, the doctor seemed a little strange around, and I couldn't help but notice that you felt a little strange around, uh, Dr. Julius Smith. Sometimes I think it's better to understand someone's true feelings by asking their friends than asking them. So, hmm. I'm sure you're very trusted. Could you tell colleague. us? I'll we'll have to. I'll we'll have to remember that rule of thumb. <laughs> That's very smart. I um, yes. I would <laughs> venture to say that. Mehmet does not uh, allow himself to fully internalize exactly the slight that was done to him by the Dr. Smith. Plagiarism was blatant and something which Dr. Smith knew that uh, Mehmet could not uh, fight against. Mm. (laughs) He knew the position of power he held and uh, Mehmet, God love him, is not... uh, is not a confrontational sort. And I do believe that it's not just that he would rather preserve his standing in the academic community. I think it's also that he would prefer to preserve his relationship with this man for whatever reason. Myself, Mm. (laughs) that man deserves to be cut off. Mm. Mm. Maybe we can make it so. I found with Mehmet's can hardly make him do something that he doesn't want to do. Nor would I wish to push anything on him. He's too good for that. I gay check? Is he in love with Mehmet? Go to make a roll. <laughs> Get that gay Gator, use that gator. Yeah, you know I will. Uh ooh. No, close, but no gadar. <laughs> <laughs> no gadar. I did roll a success because I wanted to see. Yeah. Hey. Um, hard to tell. Hard to tell. They're in between the reading of like his uh, being upset and just being kind of in a put off mood. Lady Vera, this man is in love with. Gay. Him. <laughs> That's what I say. We need a gay button. That's what I say. <laughs> gay. Gay. Everything goes red. The lights all go red. It's <laughs> red. <laughs> 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 Lady Vera, you ascertain this. As John Beddoes wipes his brow and says, well, I think that the reception is beginning to wrap up, but (laughs) I'll be at the house tomorrow and uh, look forward to seeing you all. So uh, 
I'll see you when you call. Um, it truly was a pleasure to meet all of you. Yes, a pleasure. I look forward to becoming even more acquainted. It's lovely. But um, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your stay for those of you who are visiting, and I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. He gives a bow and uh, walks off uh, to where a, 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 a butler arrives with a coat and a bowler hat, which he swiftly puts on, heads out into the wintry night. As the cocktail reception continues, uh, Makria is swept off into a private study for uh, private conversations to last the rest of the evening with the trustees. Um, as the rest of you uh, begin to understand, the evening is coming to an end for all of you, if you wish to depart. I might grab one more. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, grab another drink, you said. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't get to drink like this in Boston, so... Yes, that's that's right. We could go somewhere a little more... Fun. Our speed. Sure. We dressed, could go just for us. Is Julius Smith still in the room, or did he also go to private talk time? You would have noticed. He left for the private talks. Where are the private talks? There seem to be a variety of rooms for the people who work here. Uh, the, uh, the staff of the Imperial Institute, which does normally serve as an exhibition hall for various um, artifacts and things that are brought back f- from throughout the Empire across the world, um, really to show off the uh, splendor and majesty of the Empire and uh, the uh, how wild and uh, strange all the things are from across the world that the Britons can now see for themselves in this hall. Um, in addition to serving as event spaces, and there are sort of cigar lounges for certain folks. Mm. I want to grab a... I, I, June would like to... Like, maybe even before we were totally dismissed in this way, you know? Like, make a... Sh- go grab another drink and wander past that room and see if I can kind of stealthily be outside that door and hear anything. I'd be pretending to look at art or something. Go ahead and make a stealth check for me. So you grab another gimlet. Mm. You got some stealth, queen. A little stealthy. But kiss it to unjinx that. Oh my god! Yes. That was deep. Oh! oh wow. It get? worked. Chris it hard, worked. hard, hard success. Extreme. Extreme. Extreme, Extreme yeah. success. Eight, no wow. one is better suited. Thank you for your kisses. <laughs> no one is better suited than June Kleeman, haunter of underground pubs, dive bars, um, no stranger to uh, turning sharp corners and shadowy streets and hallways. June, you find yourself um, following the sound of footsteps um, through the beautifully uh, uh, sort of lacquered wood halls of this uh, institute. You find yourself eventually outside of a room where you can smell the strong tobacco scent wafting out of it. Um, can hear from inside um, voices, um, real, uh, very received pronunciation uh, voices, the well to do, um, uh, a whole lot of the most absolutely uh, um, fuck off rich uh, trustees here have gathered uh, smoking cigars from around as um, you can hear them um, cajoling Mehmet. As um, you can hear uh, one of them uh, saying to him, oh, come, Macri, you must have some, some sort of uh, insinuation, something that you're hunting now, some, some rare artifact, some story, what is it? As uh, you're from within, Dr. Macri, I laugh. I, <coughs> I am af- afraid that... <laughs> Well, my last sort of run-ins has left me a little weaker than normal, and uh, I had to take a bit of a holiday. I, I, uh, <laughs> I had 
traveled on a bit of a cruise and uh, made my way to Italy and attended the opera in Milan. I um, won't say that I didn't find some uh, some fun things around that uh, perhaps the uh, Italians didn't <laughs> know was right under their nose, but uh, you know nothing that's going to cause a ruckus in the Times or anything. As uh, you're listening in, um, it sounds like he's a bit drunk. Um, mm-hmm. as he's kind of laughing, and so they all kind of laugh with him. Saying Milan, yes, well, uh, Milan has the finest opera, and you know, oftentimes I think that uh, perhaps the Empire should uh, start a bit of a, uh, a franchise of operas. You know, bring bring the the British singing uh, across the world. Show them what a real opera is about. You know, the Italians they've forgotten what the real thing is. Uh-huh. As Marco uh, says. <laughs> I am not sure about that, but I, I, I uh, I'm, I'm happy to be to be home. And um, you hear the voice of Julius Smith say, "Well, we're happy that you're home, Mehmet." Roll for uh, it. As um, the laughter continues and conversation continues in a sort of uh, just a odds and ends of different people talking about their their new publications, the new books that they're uh, publishing, uh, achieving tenure and such. Uh, very uh, drunk, uh, high on cigar, head high on cigar smoke, uh, very confident people yeah. speaking to each other. Okay, well, mosey back to the group. So the rest of you, um, Things are being cleaned up here. Uh, well, you're, you're uh, not to invite them over. I, I should run this past you, but um, we have a very lovely um, hotel room. Oh, we've got more than enough room. A uh, clergyman, if, if you know what that is. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing like your place, Lady Vera. But uh, no. But we haven't gotten an invite, so this is the best we've got. Yes. Actually. Please, um, you've been so kind to my son. Please come over to the Wakington Estate. Okay. Is he there? My well, frankly, I'd love to. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he is not. My coat's but on. <laughs> the door. Yeah. He has spoke uh, absolute, uh, absolutely uh, wondrous things about each and every one of you. I, I mean. Oh, yeah, oh, no, no, please. About your, 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 your sibling, yes. Oh, really? Yeah, really. So, um, please. Stanley! He's off. He's I off. Know, he's off. Oh. As you call out his name and then you put your hand to your forehead, the door opens. Oh. Stanley steps oh, through. Yeah. Stanley. So your carriage is waiting, yeah. Martin. Poor Stanley. Oh. Stanley, did you, did you uh, were you able to go to the seediest, grubbiest? Opium den that you could find. <laughs> Timed it out perfectly, madame. Oh. Well, everybody grab their coats. As you all Obviously grab. You don't have one, so I have another Mine's already well. on. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a coat. <laughs> right. I'm wearing the my long coat. Sleeve. I'm wearing As my you're all coat. stepping <laughs> out <laughs> down the steps, the towers uh, hovering in the, uh, the night, the lamps lighting sheets. up. <laughs> Um, the golden glow of uh, the golden glow of snow drifting down slower now beneath the gas lamps. Uh, the wind not terribly cold, just drifting past you as the night is quiet, as you're all able to gather in this uh, esteemed carriage uh, of Coxworth. Um, uh, the, it takes off, and in about 30 seconds, you're down the block, and it oh. drops you off. <laughs> Shut up. Right around the corner. <laughs> at the oh, need, home. Need, you're right here. Oh. Yeah, in your backyard. Yes. Oh, this door opened a little bit. Spooky. 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 No, it's spooky. spooky. It's spooky. Yes. As um, Stanley lets you all off, uh, helping you each Thank off, you. and um, taking your various bags and things, and... Oh, as the snow drifts uh, beautifully across the uh, facade of this estate, um, you all enter into the yes. incredibly beautiful uh, trappings uh, of the lady. Ladies, uh, your quarters are to the right. Uh, you could take my uh, 
don't disturb us. Min, uh, you can enjoy my uh, husband's study. Uh, please uh, refrain from his expensive whiskies and he's... Is your husband in? No, no, he's back at the estate in Coxworth. It's uh, fox season, so... Oh, okay. Uh, if, if I could just have a word with um, uh, my love before bedtime. Uh, 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 yes. Or we can not, do whatever we want. It's not my bedtime. No, it's true. As well. I, I, oh, wasn't, I wasn't about to go to bed either. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh. I thought we were You sounded up. pretty ready to go to bed. I'm just saying if you would like to freshen up, I mean... Ah, oh, oh, I see. Well, no, and maybe we just wanted a little girls' no. chat. You, you know, we could me? powder our noses. Sure, yeah. Or I could powder your nose for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't bring my powder, but, uh, sure. As a, a, a few, uh, <laughs> um, a few, uh, long, beautiful, uh, candlesticks are being lit in corners of the room. Um, a small chandelier lit and a fire in this lounge. Uh, books upon books lining the bookcases, uh, and leather armchairs and couches arranged as you're all able to freshen up and do what you will. Um, uh, Stanley, one thing. Oh, could, yes, ma'am. Could you get my uh, smokes, please? Of course, madam. I only smoke when I'm in London. None of my business. Quickly shows up with uh, a sterling silver tin that opens up with uh, beautifully hand-rolled cigarettes. Thank you. Um, if you will, if you want, after you get uh, uh, freshened up, please join me in my study. Uh, if you, do you don't mind if I also... I mean, it's all right. If you, uh, for a cigarette? Yes. Yes, uh, could you get my husband's there? Uh, of course. And uh, uh, he walks over to a drawer, opens yeah, it up, say, it's it's and it's 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 pulling it out, uh, you see a brass <laughs> case that opens up uh, with some slightly shorter hand-rolled cigarettes. Oh my god. Yes. It's like you've swallowed a hamster. Please have some. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I enjoy you. Oh, I enjoy you as your you, you house did, is... Uh, sweet, uh, sweetheart, you don't need to say anything. Just have the cigarette, Thank please. You. Yes, it's like you swallowed a hamster. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy you. It's <laughs> the best conversation I've ever had! <laughs> yes. Wow, I oh, love it. As God, you're all... Yes, yeses. Uh, I know, one minute. Yes. He just said a yes. At your disposal, the uh, the house staff is bringing uh, silk pajamas for oh each of you, um, various so mints and things, so... uh, able to freshen up. Uh, there's a lounge set out if you wish uh, to gather, and there's also beds that are beautifully uh, made up, ready for each of you. As what are you doing? I'm in the sleepover, and that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably get into my pajamas and go back out to the lounge. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm greeting everybody. Um, I'm not totally in my pajamas because that's inappropriate for the lady. So <laughs> I'm still in my corset. I'm still in my vest, but I'm a little less done up. Mm -hmm. Your slippers are brought out for you. Thank you. Mm. And I'm still I'm, I'm drinking a, a vermouth. The peacock on or off? Off, girl. Those are poking. Those are poking. Those are poking. <laughs> um, in the lounge. In the lounge. Just the rest of you. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I, I think. I was wondering if I'd say, June, while we have a few minutes, I know you might put up a ruckus, but, well, not many people would see you, and I was just wondering if I could put on some makeup on you, just for fun. Oh. <laughs> you can take it off. Oh, no. But it might just be fun to try something new. You don't think I look good without it? I think you look fantastic, but I think the lady would like you to look a bit cleaner. Mm. I don't really see the point in doing my makeup right before I'm going to bed. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it looks the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Those cameras uh, are looking at us. I know. I know. I know. I know. Every time I'm kind of like. <laughs> um. Well, for, forget about... I forget it. No, Faye, it's not a bad idea. I, mean, I didn't mean to offend you. I just. 
You didn't offend me. I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. Oh. I, I, uh... You could do my hair. That sounds... Not like one of my skills, but I'd love to try. You know, good at hair. Mine's short. Mm. But let's try it. What do you want? What do you want me to do? Faye, <laughs> <laughs> don't now worry what? about it. Don't worry. <laughs> what now? <laughs> All right. Faye, don't Faye. Let's just go out. Yeah. Don't For worry. I'm sorry. You can't tell them they're into each other. I'm not yeah. You don't have to be sorry. Come on, let's just let's have a drink and then you can do my makeup some other time. All right. As Faye and June start to get to know each other even more in this circumstance, walking out from these gorgeous bathrooms with marble countertops and everything, um, walking back out, you find yourselves opening these heavy wooden doors into now a very warm, warmly lit and warm to the feel uh, room against the snow falling outside in Hyde Park in the distance, uh, blanketed, um, as you all gather on the couch in front of the fireplace before bed. Um, Vermouth is brought out to you and offered to the rest of you, as well as uh, just some uh, digestive uh, liquors and different things. Uh, yes, Stanley, I'm feeling a little bit uh, peckish. Could you also bring the uh, pheasant pate uh, with the crudite as well? <laughs> of course, it's warming in the You're oven. Born to play I know, oh it's so God. God. Before long, trays are brought out with the pheasant. Thank I, you, Stanley. Of course. Sit down, sit down when Faye comes back in next to her. And then she sits down, I say, Dad, what may I just say? My brother did uh, tell me you were, but you are very, you are very, you're lo lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Sorry if. Stop apologizing okay. for. <laughs> it's not sexy, but. <laughs> I do find you very cute, <laughs> but I think if you had a Her little more just a <laughs> bit of confidence, you sound sexy. Get a Stop no, no, no. Do no. very well for yourself. Please, and please. I'm so. I, may I, I try I, on your glasses? Yes. I, I think I need to go to the. Um, I'll be right back. So you uh, quickly <laughs> depart from the room. <laughs> goes to the bathroom. Yeah. Just, like, splashes cold water. <laughs> 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 He reminds me a lot of my son. Oh. oh. Yes. I must tell you what a lovely boy he was. Uh, he's, he's, he's still I'm alive. I'm sorry, yes. I just, it's been some time since I've seen him. Yes, a year. But I hope, I hope you're still proud of him. Always. He's a little pestilent. But he is my son. And thank you for taking care of him in the States. I know what you went through is harrowing, to say the least, so... That's why I'm allowing you to be in my estate. That's why I'm allowing you these uh, aperitifs and these digestives. Allowing? Yes. It's not every day that you'd be accepted into the house of the lady. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, forgive me for uh, overstepping, but um, I... I sense that it's not just you letting us do our thing, but I sense a, a spark of adventure in you. Curiosity, no? I think you want us around as much as we want to be in this beautiful well, I'm a lady of a certain age. I don't get to uh, commune with young folk very often, so it's been quite pleasant to uh, sit at the tables and with you and drink drinks and feel a little bit, uh, what's the word? Pissed. Drunk. Oh. <laughs> Pissed, yes, yes. yes. Uh, that's how you say it, yes. Yes. It's, it's brought a... Brought forth a, a, a young lady I haven't seen in a while, so mm. 
Mm. You only get to see her at the Christmas Jubilee, where I go <laughs> absolutely <laughs> b- bananas. So, yes. Yeah. I'm just not back into it at this point. Well, thank you for having us. I think I speak for all of us. It's just... Couldn't hope to be anywhere more beautiful. Yes. Well, make yourself comfortable. Well, uh, I'm assuming you'll be staying in London a few more days. Yes, we yeah. are going to see. We got them here. Is there? Yes. The doctor. Well, as long as you're here, you have a home here. The rooms are set up for you. Thank you. That do that. That do me a lot. That is unbelievably generous. Your ladyship. Your ladyship this is not necessary. We have our own lodgings, of course. But if you would have other. Please. It's a lovely, gorgeous place. Please, darling. As long as you want. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Bless your heart. Candles are beginning to burn lower. Yes. Well, um, I suppose I must go upstairs and rest. Please. Uh, I think all of us, maybe, should get some rest before <laughs> whatever so crazy good. idea Macriat's going to throw at us. Yes, if you need anything, uh, you all have a bell and your own butler as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Excuse me. Frog in the throat. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. So sorry, where are my manners? I meant golly. <laughs> That's more like it. Does anyone have any idea what the doctor wants of us tomorrow? Yeah, not a clue. I don't have a clue. Um, I'm surprised he's being so secretive about it, honestly. And I did not get a good feeling from that other professor. I, yeah. I hope he's all right. I think something's wrong with him. I know. Yeah. But you guys went on the cruise with him, right? He didn't seem sick there. I, I didn't know that. Thing. Did you? No, I. There was I a lot. Was, of, I assume everything he would have gotten, we would have. I know. There was a lot more to look at. I didn't. Um... What kind of stuff did you guys come up against on that cruise? Because I. Uh... Well, it's a, it's a wonderful little group. I, I wonder if they have a uh, a chapter here in in London. Uh, it's called the Free Spirits Artist Collective. You see. It's, a, oh. it's an amazing, amazing group of Who um, did I let in my house? <laughs> well, I, I, it's Young a, people who bring you life. Yes, that's right, that's right. Hold on to that, lady. Lady, hold on to that. We had a lot of sex. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's that's Do lovely. You. But, you know, I snuck off for another drink and I heard him talking about that he maybe wasn't feeling so good after the cruise. I'm just wondering if anyone that you guys know that else that was on that it's been vacation with you. Bro. It's been almost a month now. Probably anything he would have caught would have been after the cruise. Perhaps he went somewhere after the cruise and then caught something there. He's always dealing with some stuff. We've seen others fall ill. I'm starting to sense a pattern that we all have known someone who falls ill. Falls ill. I think that's right. Or who's away on business. Yeah. <clears throat> Perhaps it's just the time. Yeah. Well, no, please. Hey, please. <laughs> I was just going to say it was lovely to meet you all. I've been alone in my house for uh, quite some time, so yes. But I will now to bed. Um, Thank you. Here, I'll come with you to the men's quarters. Plus, I gotta get you to stop flirting with my girlfriend! I'm just kidding. Hey, go ahead and start with her. Don't stop. Yeah, no, she likes it. No, no, I wasn't. I was just remarking on, on, um... No, I'm simply, I'm, I'm simply joking. Um, 
In fact, I like it that other oh. people flirt with her, so, oh. so please do. But, um, anyway, I actually have something else to ask you. And can I... As we <laughs> jump away to the men's quarter? Uh-huh. As you're all going off into different sleeping quarters. Yeah, I would sort of turn um, to you, Bert, and say... I know you, you're you're a fan of the occult, and, and so I, I was just wondering if if you've heard of anything, um, if, if the words the brothers in hatred, the skinless revealed, uh, rang any bells to you? I take off my glasses and rub my head a little bit and think if I remember anything about that. Can I do an occult check? You can make an occult check. It was so long ago. You remembered the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you pushed that roll as you are searching your mind to try and pour through any occult sort of knowledge that you know of to find something skinless revealed brothers and hatred as you think back you try to piece things together connections in your mind you think of shadowy figures you think of cults think of people married to a fell purpose. You think of missing people. You think of losing people. And as you get lost in your mind, you start to lose your breath, a shortness of breath, thinking back to that day and to that time. And I'm going to need you to make a sanity roll. Oh, to that day. Shoot. That day, hmm. success. Okay, you don't lose any sanity. So pull yourself together. <clears throat> I'm gonna rub my head and my glasses back on and say, I'm afraid of it. The name, uh, it, it doesn't ring a specific bell, but I can do some research go through my my nose. Uh, uh, you hey, that'd be lovely. For any you. particular reason. Ah, uh, just. You know, things I've found along my travels. Right. Right. Well, I certainly could bring you to the, the region to it. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So we'll find your way to different beds. Two of you perhaps finding each too. other, or unless you're sleeping apart. Uh, all of you find your way to your different beds. As I'm falling asleep, I want to read in one sitting all of Archibald's book, Isles yeah. of Insanity. It's wow. very easy to read for you. <laughs> you can Word. give it that. As far as literary merits, oh, wow. you find Ooh. little to none. I'm sitting in wow. my bed and my son. Scathing review. Fuming. <laughs> <laughs> the, the snippet on the back somehow the cult returns is about as deep as it goes it's about the long and short of it oh, no. uh, is it what? What? the snippet on the back that the quote somehow the cult returned oh, yeah. that's it. it's about where the, the story plot. begins and ends <laughs> as you finish it Damn. very quickly is there a fireplace in the room? There's a uh, fireplace, yeah. <laughs> Just throw it, throw it in, and it. And then as soon as I do, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go over to the fire. <laughs> Too chaotic. Can you, oh, <laughs> can you burn it down? You burn it <laughs> Little flecks of flame. Just uh, um, as you uh, tamp it down, and it falls apart into ash. A cheap book. It's a cheap story. As it falls apart in the fire. Say, as it falls apart. Just the fire <laughs> dies down. Damn, I thought there might be a clue in there. Go to sleep. Do you all pass the night? Well, yeah. Sorry, no, I no, think no, no. at the last minute, I think I would open my suitcase in my room. I would change into Charlie Price, and I would walk down to the girls' mm-hmm. hallway, mm-hmm. Met, nodding at guards. Yes. Sorry, sorry. They all um, just give a very professional nod. 
Yeah. As I go to... I'll knock on one of the girl's chambers. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, June, your door is knocked upon. I'll go open it. Oh. I was looking for Faye. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the next one. <laughs> As Hello. Faye, you hear Hello, it's knock. Charlie, Charlie Price. Oh, come in, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I give oh, you a next switch. week. <laughs> oh, gosh. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bed isn't going to sleep in itself. Well, let's go. <laughs> Strip naked, you... pop into bed. <laughs> Strip naked. <laughs> you did all that work to get into the silk pajamas. Lines. Well, yes, they weren't going to let me in the women's <laughs> wing. I was to say, Coxworth runs a tight ship as uh, you find yourself in bed with Faye. The night passes, the wind blowing quietly outside. And morning comes over a snow blanketed London. Light now coming in from cold blue skies outside as um, you all are aroused. Uh, there's a morning you, you're all hey. aroused <laughs> as uh, a, a bell is rung lightly in the distance uh, from the dining room and all of you uh, arise to find the dining room um, complete with uh, beautiful arrangements of the finest uh, croissants from France, uh, the uh, uh, bowls of fruit from all sorts of different locales, um, a whole uh, bounty of a breakfast here, eggs being prepared for you uh, as you wish, and on the tables um, in front of you, uh, as is delivered every day, uh, to mm. the Wankington Estates, uh, or the Times of London, the uh, the, the paper. Um, Fismore Wankington. Uh, Fismore Wankington. Fismore Wankington. Um, the uh, Times of London uh, newspaper in front of you. Audacity. And um, the cheek that are... just a glance at it, um, there's a very splashy headline um, on the front page that catches all of your attention very quickly. Um, a headline that says, man dies three times in one night. What? And I'm going to no, 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 hand no, this no, over no, no. to all of you. Three bodies in, ho man dies three times in one night. Three bodies in hotel, each man carries same identity. Three slain men were discovered last night in a London hotel, each bearing positive identification as Dr. Julius Smith of <gasps> I Islington. 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 Each had been stabbed through the heart. Holy shit. Maids at the Chelsea Arms Hotel discovered the remains. The room also was registered in the name of Dr. Smith. Bonafide papers identify the trio as one man, the Dr. Smith, who is a notable professor and an antiquarian doing business in the city. The victims bear superficial resemblances, and each had passed as Dr. Smith since independently arriving in London three days ago. Confusingly, the real Dr. Smith or at least the man described by neighboring Londoner, Londoners as Dr. Smith, cannot be found. Holy shit. Police well, request that he come forth. The passports of these men record independent worldwide travels for each man over the past three years. Oh my God. Inspector Fleming of Scotland Yard is at a loss to describe the meaning of the bizarre mystery, but is eager to converse with any other <sighs> Julius Smiths still living. Wait, what was the thing about the three years? They each had a different passport. Passport they've been, they've been traveling been different for three places for three Jesus. years. Holy shit. And with that, we're going to go to a crossroads. Oh, oh my god. Put her on the board. No, Wait, what's the, the guy from board. Scotland Yard's name? Julia Smith Something from last Fleming? night is alive Inspector still, or do you think one of them? Who knows? Yes, he has to be. What, one of the dead ones? He has to be what? Alive. Mm -hmm. Well, the, so from this, there's a real one that was not one of the three that are dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think whoever we saw last night was one of the fake I fakies. Too. He I was giving creepy. I Crossroads. And I think that. Oh, sorry. No, please. Doctor Macriot knew that and was freaked out. For maybe, that maybe, but why would he get drunk with him? Anyway, 
Um, he wants to I'll add to your that. board, if you wish, a little portrait of Dr. Smith. Uh, oh. that just in case you want to pin him anywhere. Oh. Show the cam. Show the cam. Uh, um, Can I show the cam? Oh, yeah. Can you see? Oh, I can also show on mine. Turn it up towards the light? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Eric better. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Eric better. Eric, Eric. Eric better. <laughs> and uh, you can yeah, also Eric. add this uh, hunk of picture of the... Dr. Mehmet Mahmoud. Shut up! Oh, oh, no. Shut up! Oh, oh, he's he's right. Right. Wait, Cassie. Wait, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. hey, this, is the um, this is the line all over again. So yeah. Now we're, we're finally going to go to Crossroads. Crossroads is what else do they see in the paper? Something vitally important? <gasps> vote important? Or an ad for walking sticks? Oh vote God. sticks. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe ad for walking sticks is vitally important. <laughs> But I feel like we should we've be been here by before. cities too. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how much we're gonna use this map, but well, like, I think if yeah. we make like Lond a little London section, mm. uh -huh. do you know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah, what I kind wondering. of wonder though between each city if we'll. we'll we think set. we may need yeah. to organize, yeah. Oh, definitely. But like, if we want to connect different. I don't know. Important sticks. Important sticks. Important. Oh. Sticks. Sticks. <laughs> walking sticks. An <laughs> for walking sticks. sticks. Important. Okay, I just see the, the heat's getting kind of better. Do this. I know, it's like, oh it's okay, right? guys, it's that now. shook me. Yeah. What? I had a feeling there was something weird coming. You know, I feel like I've been like yeah. on the edge of my seat for like the last <laughs> hour. Imagine but... nothing weird ever came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sleep, you wake up, gorgeous day. It's a life sim. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, it's something important by one by vote. By one by vote. Um, something vitally Thank you. important. On the second page, as you're looking page. through this in the newspaper and just sort of then, you have a moment of thinking to yourselves, just scan just the rest to see if there's anything else that Defo. could strike. And you find on the second page this article. Because I'm looking for the crossword. Uh, professor's home, professor's home burns, ah. fears for his safety. <gasps> Professor Mehmet Makriat, a figure well known in academia, was sought today following the burning of his St. John's Woods home under mysterious circumstances. Mm. Missing also past. is Dr. Makriat's assistant, one James Bed Beddoes. Witnesses saw a man resembling Beddoes run from the house just before the fire broke out. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Dr. Makriat or Beddoes is requested to contact oh, Detective Sergeant Rigby shit. at Scotland Yard's arson division. Sergeant oh my God! Rigby? Everyone we know is in hot water. What do you water. What do you all make of this? I I, I think we've uh, I think we've certainly I think we've got to find Beddoes. And Macri Macriot. Uh, I mean, of course. And Mister Doctor Smith. Every, anyone, any, uh, uh, but the only address that we had to find him was the his was house. the house that burned. I mean, we could go investigate. What it. about the school? the school? You asked, right? Oh. You asked for for um, this. Dr. Smith said if we went to the concierge at the school, they'd give us their addresses. Their addresses? But don't you think that whoever at Scotland Yard has probably already gone there and... But... You want to talk to about them? And it seems like they're at a loss. That they can't find him anywhere. So I think the, uh, the, the school... If they had the answers, I think Scotland Yard would already be on. Well, Makriat definitely is, if he's feared for his safety, they must have spoken to him, so he must be somewhere. Maybe. That's a very good. Maybe we could contact uh, Doctor uh, Inve uh, Inspector Rigby. Detective Sergeant. Inspector Fleming. Well, Rigby is the arson division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we don't know anything. Do you mean? What? We don't know anything. About this case? Right. To, to, to... We try to. We may know some. We don't, do we? Do you? No, well, but we know. We just know him. Out, yes. And we were there the night that this happened. Right. We were with him. Right. Lady Vera. Yes. What do you think? I wish I had more connections at Scotland Yard. That's what I'm thinking. I think the first thing that makes the most sense is to find uh, the professor. Yes, I think uh, it's more I pressing to me, and it's also more personally. Yes, I, I worry m mostly about his safety. Yes. It says that maids at the Chelsea Arms Hotel found the remains. Those seem like the kind of people we might be able to maids. get to talk to us. I, I think, I think the investigators yes. might be a little more. Medicine. Are there phones in Lincoln Hunt Park? 
Um, telephones? Yeah. I believe so. Like, I think that there's phone? like a very, yeah, very I early definitely... telephone. Um, I feel like I should. Maybe. I think Probably so. Probably for just the rich, which. Yeah, or. Hello. There's telegraphs, is uh, I think more common, but there's telephone does exist, yeah. I mean, if anyone's got it. Yeah. Stanley! <laughs> yes. Uh, who should we send the telegraph to? Uh, it's, it's, up, it's up to everyone. I, I'm personally more more excited, or not excited, obviously, but more anxious to find out what happened to the professor than to um, the other professor, Smith. Mm. Um, you want to find Macriot. I want to find Macriot. And, and there's something about... I know it's seeming like he's run out because he started the fire, but there's something about... James running out right before the fire started. I wonder if he was in danger from a beast or creature or something, and that he set fire to the building to save Macriot. Based on how he was acting yesterday, I don't think he would do anything to hurt Macriot. Don't you think? It's a good point. Yeah. No, that man is a homosexual. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So oh. you picked up on that. Just, just a little bit, but it's it's uh, very, very beautiful. Uh, that is his oh, devotion good. for uh, the the professor. Yes. So you don't have any problem with gay people? No, no, no. Um, my son is as homosexual as a hand whistle. So. Oh, good. <laughs> I know it. We all did. I don't think he knows it, mm. but. Well, I'm glad, because most of us here have a little something going on. Oh, I know. <laughs> My gay daughter is a 80. Oh, oh, it is an 80. Oh, oh I know. All right. I, I, used, think... I, I used to read a lot of Oscar Wilde, so oh. you're in safe hands. You're the wonderful author. You're all... You... Never mind. Uh, Cole Porter played in this house as well, so... Well, that's I'm down for the gays. <laughs> oh, good. That's fantastic. Anyway, I wonder if we should split up in between a couple of areas to get, I don't know, and have a meeting point, I guess, here. Or just get all the information we can yes. as quick as possible. Why don't we meet here uh, an hour past noon? All right. Who wants Very to go good. in? I also wonder, I feel like the last thing I... I, I, I Sorry, I'm just no, saying so much, just spilling out of my brain, but I, I feel as though um, uh, if Macriot is still alive, I think he'll meet us at his house, burned down or not, Right. at the time he said for us to meet I himself. Think you are, Don't I you think you're right. Yes, I, I, yeah. I, I certainly It's the only... And what time did he say for him, too? What time did he say again? He said after... So 3 p.m. Oh, okay. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. So, I mean, we could meet near the address and kind of uh, stake it out from the corner. Or well, maybe we could shows up. do something before then. Try to meet our date at 3 and before then we could go to the police or go to the hotel. Get some more information, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to... The, um, I think yeah. that if, if you are... Inter- if we're interested in the idea of splitting up, I think some people should go, you know, some of our better talkers should go to talk with the investigators. And folks should go hotel in the homes, go kind of watch what's going on at the scene of the crimes. I feel like you probably, a lady has some pool with the, the investigators. Yeah. Yes, and I don't think the, uh, the common folk who work in the hotel will speak to a lady of my stature. Mm. Mm, sure. I, I'm willing to go talk to the investigators with you. I would love the company. Fantastic. I'll go to uh, the hotel and, and their homes to see what's going on. You want to come in? Let's do it. Hey, Lady Faye. Well, who wants me? Well, I'll say well, the last time we s- split up, it, uh, well, you nearly almost died. I ran in in a tizzy, <laughs> panicked for you, but I, I obviously think you're a capable and incredible adventurer yourself. So go wherever you want. Well, do you guys think you'll need anyone a little more sweet and confident just in case? Or or do you feel that this will just be a stealthy mission in and out? I think that if on the chance that it becomes a stealthy mission, it couldn't hurt to have a nice distraction. Well, I appreciate your offer, Clayton, but sometimes it's good to miss each other. 
Of course. <laughs> and I do miss you easily. And I miss you already. <laughs> so where are people going? If uh, who's together? So the three of us: Bert, June, Bert, June, and Faye, Faye are going to go Bureau. to the Great. hotel and Macriot's home. James hotel and Macriot's home. Great. And then uh, Clayton, Vera. Mm-hmm. Where are you guys going? The investigators. I think um, sure we're going to. In, well, to Scotland Yard. Yeah. 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 To talk to maybe Inspector Fleming and Inspector Rick. You okay. What was that? Oh, this is the mini case. I think. Yeah. That was uh, terrifying. That was so sorry. Yeah, the whole table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god. Um, <laughs> great. Awesome. Um, Everything looks awesome. In excellent. Also. Yeah. You all set forth into London. The blue sky almost oppressive above you now, cold winds blowing, even with the sun shining down, glittering on the snow, covering the city. As you all head out, um, we'll start with the three of you as you make your way across town to the Chelsea Arms Hotel. So as you St. John's, just curious, yeah. St. John's is here, St. John's, which is where Makarat's home is. Yes. And then where is the hotel? The Chelsea Arms Hotel is... Um, oh, yeah. And your house is near Hyde Park, right? So yeah. you actually yeah, so might my be closer house, to the house, Macriot's house. My my house is right oh, here. Okay, well, where's Chelsea? Oh, we're very close. Is that where the hotel is? Um, probably. Probably. I would... Yes. I'm trying <laughs> to find her on a map, and I'm failing. Sure. We're going to say it's in Chelsea. Um, the Chelsea Arms Hotel. As you go off, um, just you find curious. yourself in front of uh, one of those old establishments, beautiful, uh, ornate sort of 19th century uh, uh, architecture to it. And as you approach, um, you can see that there are several um, Scotland Yard vehicles parked out front. There doesn't seem to be too much of a commotion going on around here, but. Um, as you're approaching, the three of you go ahead and make spot hidden checks for me. Spot hidden. Ooh. It's suspended. Success for me. What's this one called? Hard success. Hard, hard success. success. Hard success. Amazing. Um, success. All wow. of you approaching. Um, okay, we are come alert. close to <laughs> the uh, beautifully ornate front entrance of the hotel. But pause for a moment as you spy between buildings and alleyway. I can't stop you. You can see that there are, um, you know, a whole lot of trash receptacles, different things down this alleyway, and doors leading into different buildings. Uh, and in this dark alleyway, you can see that there is uh, a woman smoking a cigarette in the darkness, um, dressed in a maid's uniform. Okay, so that's, so a, what's so the, that's a no from Bert. What's the plan? What? No, no, I, I was just nothing. What are you shaking your head for? Oh, I, I just, um, I don't know if I would be the best to approach the, the woman. Right. So mm. I was going to hang back, and then, and I'm very good at, um, <clears throat> I rustle through my messenger bag and pull out a little leather notebook, and I say, very good at um, noting, and so. Mm. Well, how about, <laughs> right, how about uh, you and I go talk to her, and... Good cop, bad cop. Right. <laughs> Which one do you want to be? What do you think? <laughs> You're cheeky, my goodness. Uh, how about you stay here and... You don't want me to... I don't know, come holla if... You don't want me to nude. Oh, I think that it might set her a little on edge if there's someone taking notes right, of our I'll conversation. Just look yeah. around. Yeah. That's a good idea. We haven't looked around much. Yeah. You're full of good ideas. <laughs> Maybe you can ask other folks around if they've seen anything. You know what? Kind of act, seem like a just a curious guy checking out what's happening. You think you can... You can do it. Do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just tell mm-hmm. yourself you can, and then you can. 
Mm-hmm. You see kind of like a light sweat start to break out over Bert's forehead. He pulls out a handkerchief and dabs it. Absolutely. Honestly, I think exactly who you are is perfect for this. I mean, this is unsettling, you know? Look, I'd be nervous walking up, seeing police tape around a hotel. Don't you yeah. have nothing to worry about. You're going to fit right in. Just be yourself, Bert. But not... Don't be too... Uh, let's go. Yeah, it's nuanced. It's nuanced. <laughs> <laughs> you're going around to the alley. Yeah. You're going in the front door, Bert? Um, yeah. Great. As you walk in... Uh, uh, one of the attendants in a, a long coat says, Are you a guest with us, sir? Oh, uh. <laughs> yes, I no, no. Uh, well, I am conducting um, an interview um, with a yeah. guest uh, here. Um, and I'm a writer. Partner in crime for leaving. <laughs> Good luck, though. <laughs> you see, I'm a writer, so um, I, I was having a meeting with them, one of your, your guests. Go ahead and make a persuade roll. Come on. Come on, baby. I want Bert to succeed. Ooh. Uh, 11. Um, yeah, 11. Really? No, yeah. I think that's a 7. Oh, no, it's not. It's a 1. What? That's, that was a, well, I just flipped it, but it was like that. So there. 11. So Incredible. that's what does that mean? Uh, a success. Just regular? One away from my heart, but I don't know if that's going to make... Is it, is it a big difference between a regular and a... No. As this man uh, looks at you... <sighs> All right, so on your way up the stairs, and he points towards the staircase that kind of wraps around up to a, 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 an upper job. mezzanine area where Scotland Yard are kind of gathered. Um, I, as I'm going up that to the upper mezzanine, is there like a corner I can kind of like duck behind to like try and listen to the Scotland Yard people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, the sort of like these uh, almost like uh, Greco-Roman columns uh, adorning the area around here. Um, <laughs> as, uh, you're trying to hide from the Scotland Yard in here. Um, go to make a stealth check. Yeah, I mean, not like hide, hide. I'm just kind of trying to like, I just kind of just trying to get close down. enough. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I'm go ahead and make it with a bonus die. Um, and I'll say that the repercussions for this are not going to be super die. A five. Uh, uh, yeah. Woo! Wow, you're rolling. Yeah, Bert is killing it. That's a hard. You're marking off you're everything rolling. you succeed on too. Oh my gosh. Is there a big difference between a um, here between an extreme success and a hard success? Um, no, I'm gonna say that you you got what you got here, which okay. is really good. As uh, you kind of sidle up behind a column, listening in, you hear these. Uh, uh, Scotland Yard uh, sort of taking notes with each other as uh, some of them are sort of filing up and down, um, cleaning the, the crime scene that's uh, in some floors above, but here sort of coalescing and reviewing clues as they're sort of speaking to each other, as I say. And you're, also, you're telling me that it was the same telegram on each body. Yes, it was the same one. As uh, much as uh, the same identity, it was the same telegram on each, saying the same thing to each of them. Meet me in London. Urgent. S. Fascinating. Oh. On all of the different bodies. We sent a squad to check the shop and the home. Yes, oh, wow. a squad. Okay. Yes, turns out nothing down on his LinkedIn, but uh, seems like there's nothing there. We turned up all the odds and ends, searched through it all. Just an antique shop. Seems like someone left in a hurry. Yeah. Take notes of it. Continue to clean things up. Strange morning. As they go about their business, that's what you overhear from the Scotland Yard. I oh, furiously awesome. write it down. So we go outside to the two of you, coming up to the smate. <laughs> It's just, just ripping, ripping cigs out here in the alley. She looks up over at you. Sorry to bother you, but you mind if I grab one of those? Yeah, all right. Takes one out, hands it to you. Light? Just a light, the match. Thank you. <sighs> you work here? Yeah, yeah, I work here. What's all this about? I mean. You know what, Ed? If you've been around, you know, stay at the hotel. No, 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 no. I mean, I read, I read the paper this morning. I just yeah, murder, homicide, 
first one that I've experienced working here, but the way this world's going, I figure it might be the last. What? What do you mean? Well, you think that the that murder's gonna be the last murder here? Oh, oh, oh. I misheard you. People are angry, people are <laughs> tired. It's, it's just getting tough out here. Hmm. Yeah. Did you see any of what happened in there? I read that uh, maids discovered the bodies. I hope that you were one of them. What's it to you? American, huh? Yeah. Is it a crime to have a little morbid curiosity in something like this? I suppose not. Strange times, strange things. Yeah. She looks at the two of you. you can either make a charm or a fast talk. Roll. I'm gonna go for a charm and I'm gonna say. Have you said like... anything? Okay, you said no, something. This is it. <laughs> Do you need a hug? Go ahead and do charm. <laughs> I love you. That's so funny. bunny. Oh. Fast talk. Oh. Success. Normal Extreme. Success. Let's go. Oh. Four. Oh. Wow. No. As uh, she continues to take a drag, you see her hands start to shake. Oh, baby. I haven't had one of those in a long time. Oh, honey. Oh. Uh, as tears in. begin to well up and you go in for the hug, she softens into you as she kind of drops her cigarette and just lets you hug her. Oh. I saw some fucked up shit. It's not fair. I saw some dirty, dirty business. You shouldn't have to the see bodies, anything. they were all sorts of... I don't know who would do such a thing to a body. One of them. Nothing. Skin. Gone. Other one, same thing. Just the arms. Other one, same thing. Just the legs. You tell me who would do that. What is this world coming to? I don't know. That's fucked up. I don't so know. Sorry you had to see that. She takes out another cigarette. <laughs> I don't get off work soon mm. enough. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna hug my family. Do we have money in this game? You do. It's based on your credit rating. Um, what do you want to do? I was just gonna like give her a little money. Yeah, you can give her. <laughs> I'm. I think you can a few, afford a few Literally. pounds. Yeah. Ugh. And I don't have to mark anything. No. Sure. Okay. I'll. Clasp them in her hand and say, Take tomorrow off. Call in sick. Just new tears begin to well. And you guys want any more cigarettes? <laughs> I got a lot of these. You're gonna need them yeah, tonight. Them. Oh. I'll take another. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, loves. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. She smokes a cigarette and just kind of starts to. Stock away from you all coming around. I imagine that Bert's coming out the front door yeah. in order to meet the three of you coalescing in front of the Chelsea Arms Hotel. <clears throat> yeah, I tell Bert everything that. Yeah, I, I should give you guys my notebook. I'm gonna have to think about. Meet me in London Urgent X. X or S? S. Yes. Oh, it was X. Oh, I thought it was X. S. I thought it was X too. What oh, wow. It seems like the three bodies had skin removed in enough to make one whole body. Like a s Is this like the it's Yeah, what was it that Clayton said to you last night about something about skinless? Is it you something about 
Did he ask you about something like that? Were you listening in uh, the men's quarters? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry, I thought that was when we were all having a drink. But yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Clayton can do it. <laughs> um, I didn't I proven know to be anything about, good about it. it at the time. But something about the skinless uh, revealed brothers, which, yes, it seems as though <clears throat> it checks, checks out. Hmm. It's quite disturbing. We should very. We get should ask him about it. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps see what they want him. I look at my wristwatch. What time is it? Um, at this point, I would say that it's getting into the early afternoon. It's like by the time you make it to St. John's Wood, I think that would be about the time that you said that you were going to meet them. Oh, also, what's the plan that we all meet up at 3 p.m.? Or just you I guys? Think so. well, yeah, we're all meeting. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. We had, I would, I guess, start making our way. As you all three have gathered with clues that you've garnered, pan over Ooh. across town. And we find ourselves over at uh, Scotland Yard. Yeah. With Clayton and Lady Vera approaching. As. You make your way into the uh, the precincts. Uh, find people, all sorts of cops and uh, detectives working over notes and different things. Um, there seems to be someone at a sort of reception desk. Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, at a reception desk uh, doing intake. So he looks up at you. Can I help you? Yes, we've come to call on uh, a certain detective. Uh, uh, I, I do believe it, it might be um, uh, Inspector Fleming or Inspector Rigby. Do they have to be, happen to be here? Uh, they're both in uh, for a moment. Uh, and what business are you attending on? Uh, we are looking for a friend. For a friend? Yes. Uh, well, uh, Professor Mehmet Makria. Uh, I don't know if you heard about the... Yes, I've heard about the disappearance. Uh, if you'll forgive me for asking, my lady. Um, do you come with any information? Or... We were with him last night. Is that right? Yes. We were invited to his uh, talk. Right. Well, um, give me one moment. He disappears from behind the desk. And goes back uh, and... Young gentleman, what is our uh, angle here? <laughs> you know, it's a good question. I, I, I don't really know what our angle is, but I, I think... I think our angle is completely truth- truthfulness. I mean, our best. It's an amazing question. Charisma. Yeah. <laughs> no, we were scheming. Well, she's she's rich and knows everybody, and I yes. I, I, I think charisma. I, I believe I believe the the, the, the <laughs> truth will uh, will um, set us free. F- set us free. But if if it gets to a point, feel free to uh, start a fib. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Well, we we definitely can start a fib, but but the thing is, is that I, I think. The, the fact of the situation was, was we were at this party with him on the night he was murdered, met all three people who have disappeared. Uh, I think we have something to offer them. And That's in true. return, they can maybe give us a little bit of information. Um, Smart. I don't know. But perhaps in order for them to give us information, we need a reason for them to give us information. Why don't we have a, 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 a word that we say when we feel like we need to change tactics? Okay. Uh, well, what do you suggest that uh, that might be, Lady Vera? Maybe. Uh, what was your uh, your your childhood pet? Well, when I was young, I I had a little mole rat. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite interesting. Uh, I think it's a uh, South African species, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, what, was his, what was its name? Uh, Booby. Okay. <laughs> so, if if we're ever in a, a pickle, please just uh, slyly say booby. Okay. <laughs> I think I can manage that. Booby? I think I booby. can. Booby. I think I can manage that. Booby. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> As uh, he comes back around and says, uh, Inspector Fleming will see you now. <laughs> booby. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, oh. It's brought back. Uh, um, find yourself in a, a small uh, windowless office uh, where the blinds are drawn um, and you're let in and behind the desk uh, is a woman in full Scotland Yard uh, attire as uh, she looks up at you and says so I've heard that you've uh, 
had a recent encounter with the missing. Um, do you have information for us on his current whereabouts? Uh, we don't have any information about his current whereabouts, no, and I, so I'm assuming that you don't either? I'm sorry, I was under the... Uh, I was under the impression that you had information that uh, helped the Scotland Yards and... Uh, we can tell you anything about the party last night, but we're his good friends, so we want some information, uh, 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 all that you know about him um, and where he might be, um, and in return we might tell you our story about what, what happened last night. <laughs> you bartering with me? Yeah. Go ahead and make a... Do you want the information or You can make either a fast talk or a persuade roll. I'm dead. What I mean, it's true. We have well, well, everything that happened last night—the creepy yeah. people. We talked to the person mm -hmm. who's all three sure, people who were missing. Sure, sure. I talked to them. Fair enough. Get subpoena in court. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I mean. No. Uh, okay, what am I doing? Either fast talk or persuade. We've got a bunch of information. Yeah. <laughs> we're not willing to give it to you. Oh, we're, yeah, we're not giving it. <laughs> mm, fast talk or what? Uh, fast talk or persuade. Ooh, persuade. I would succeed. Nice, amazing. Um. As you say this uh, to Inspector Fleming. Right. Okay. And she opens the drawer, pulls out her notepad, and uh, gets out a pen. So, um, what happened last night? Pulls, having been thrown through the window, uh, various windows, and we can see. Um, possibility of targeting a uh, um, study library uh, for all intents and purposes uh, any paper products any research books anything like that uh, had no chance of survival in the fire mm. um, beyond that it was thrown right into the house thrown into the house mm. yes um, Lots of credit. so 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 we had heard that steal the finding that the, um, the assistant James, he had been seen running out of the house at, right before the fire took place. So if he had been seen running out of the house and the fire was thrown, the bottles were thrown into the house and the person who saw him running out of the house didn't see James do that, are you saying that James did not start this fire? What I'm saying is the evidence of windows broken in rather than out from the combustion of a flame. Uh, as well as uh, glass detritus, uh, different sort of spray marks, uh, as well as the uh, rags and various telltale signs of Molotov cocktails, um, we can ascertain that the burning came from outside. Uh, this uh, research assistant, as they say, um, yes, eyewitnesses seem to have seen him run out just before the fire broke out. He has not been found since. But not throwing anything as he was running out of the house. Not according to the witnesses, though we won't rule anything out right now. Now, what happened last night? <laughs> well, a lovely evening. There was, um, what was the main course? <laughs> Uh, well, I believe it was, it was some sort of chicken, but... Uh, a chicken well, Valentine, wasn't yes, it? Get out of my office, please. Sorry, what did you say? Get out of my office. You can't tell a lady to get out of my office. I can. Office. You're in the Scotland Yard. As she stands oh, up oh, and opens the door. Severely. Sorry. Should we wait? Yeah, oh, let's wait a minute. It's going a bit late, guys. I hope wait that's okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. Just to get through this full first session. Yeah. Uh -oh. No data. What time is it? 10.48. We have hey, no data. No data. Okay. Can they see us see oh. at all? <clears throat> um, it isn't very laggy. This clock hey, part is very cool. I know, I, know, I love, love this. I love all these paints. Did these come with the book or did you print these? That, I, oh, well, the like, PDFs came with the book. Yeah, there's like zero up. But All Eric, of the pretty paper. Oh, you Eric got a big pretty paper. Of pretty paper. Right, 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 right. I love it. I know. I love the calendar. 